Welcome to the Wake Dot Show. Welcome to the Wake Dot Show. Chicka chicka Wake Dot Show. Chicka 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 Wake Dot Show. And we're live. Chicka chicka Wake Dot Show. Chicka chicka Wake Dot Show. Wait, you're not. You're not on me. You're not. The camera's not on me, is it? Now it is. All right, we're out. Damn it. I was hoping they were uh, going to think that that's, uh, you know, something that was produced. Wake dot show. Wake dot show. Sounds good. How you doing this morning, sir? Doing excellent, man. Uh, good weekend. Nothing too crazy. Uh, actually got a little sportsy this weekend. Uh, so sportsy. I'm sure we'll get into that. Yeah, I got a little sportsy this weekend. What? Actually watched some college football this weekend. Uh, did you watch Florida State lose again? No, no, that's a waste of time. What uh, what did you watch? The University of Miami. Ah, the U. Oh man. Um. Okay, so that's, that's right. You're from Miami. I forgot. That's the kind of that's the kind of sporting I live for, man. That's uh, that was an incredible game. Uh, you're right. Uh, a lot of pride, you know. Obviously, coming from the 305, and uh, it it's just amazing to see that program, uh, kind of uh, finally uh, find its 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 rightful place in collegiate football and uh to also uh really kind of put on their best game of the season against uh notre dame just makes it all that much better nice uh they're ranked uh, number two now but we also have uh let's see florida state's not ranked right ucf and usf are uh i think so i'd have to look it up and double check usf may have uh, fallen uh a bit since, i think they're since they had that one loss uh, yeah but, but they're, they're still like 20th yeah, I think they're ranked uh, twenty, and then uh, UCF is like twelve or something ridiculous like that. No, the UCF program's doing unbelievable, and I've been telling people, I go, look, you know, really the key uh, for UCF right here, this is the crossroads. This is what's going to determine whether you a you are an elite school when it comes to college football, or you continue to be this kind of mid grade school. Uh, that everyone sees you as here in the state of Florida. Uh, they're going to have to put up big money to keep this coach. I think he wants to stay, uh, but there are going to be tons of offers coming to this guy's way because what he's been able to do in, in, in the amount of time he's been there has been unbelievable to put a school like that on the map. Uh, and I think it's it's time. I think it's time for the University of Central Florida to step up and uh, and and really kind of join the the ranks of USF. Man, and, for somebody who doesn't know anything about sports, all of a sudden you're you, you watch one <laughs> game over the weekend and you're an expert. I follow, like I said, I follow it on the surface level, you know. But it's uh, they they have the student population to justify giving this coach the big bucks, um, and it's one of these situations where I think they could really uh, build a legacy on if they're able to hang on to Coach Frost. Uh, so. Uh, thanks to Sports Center for all that insight. All right, here we go. Uh, UCF uh, nine and zero overall. Well, I can't. Oh, never mind. I'm trying to. F- you think it'd be easy? Uh, what is US UCF's uh, football ranking? You think that'd be one of those things that would pop right up? Do uh, AP college football ranking. All right, AP. Oh yeah, I guess I can just do all of them, right? Yeah. AP. That's the one everybody looks at, anyways. Welcome to the Wake Dot Show. I'm Fisher, the man. I'm Chris Fisher, along with uh, Johnny Torres. Good morning, everybody. The AP Top 25 is outed. The U, Miami, is ranked number two. All right, Alabama, Miami, Oklahoma, Clemson, Wisconsin, Ohio State, Notre Dame. Dame. Where are you? UCF 14. That's amazing. That's still amazing. Oh, actually, and South Florida's dropped to 23. Yeah, look, I mean... It, like I said, if some if it's if a college football fan were to wake up right now after being in a coma, uh, even for a year, he'd think that he woke up in an alternate universe. Yes, and uh, those two teams will be playing each other on looks like uh, Friday the twenty fourth. It's going to be in Orlando. Oh. It'll be the war on I four. The NCAA's got to be loving that. All right, we're at uh, stuff you should know for those of you that used to uh, listen to me at ninety seven X. Uh, between 2001 and 2011, 12, somewhere in there. And uh, Stuff You Should Know is kind of our news feature. Uh, we're adding Stuff You Should Know today. And I think what we're going to do is put it uh, at 7.30 and 8.30 normally. But we've got a guest booked uh, this morning at 7.30 out of Alabama. It's a news talk host uh, in Alabama, and she's going to be talking to us about Roy. 
about uh, Senator good old, good old Roy, Senator Roy, <laughs> and uh, the growing list of 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 allegations against politicians and celebrities when it comes to sexual everything. I mean, sexual harassment to uh, just unwanted advancements to flat out rape, and and the list is snowballing. I mean, it's not just growing; it is snowballing. So, uh, over the weekend, Johnny Torres sent me um, uh, a story about George Takai. No, no, not <laughs> you too, George Takai, or is it Takai or Takay? I think it's Takay. Takay, George Takay, and uh, that would be uh, you know from Star Trek and Mr. Sulu, right? That was Mr. Yeah, Sulu. That's right. Are, are you are you uh, are you a Star Wars Star Trek? Um, geek. Uh, I love sci-fi in general. Uh, I don't get super passionate about either one, um, but I love Star Wars, Star Trek. Um, uh, which one am I forgetting? Uh, all that stuff. I mean, uh, big Backs of the Future fan. Uh, I mean, really, that was the movie of just about my entire childhood. I mean, I'll still sit there and watch them. Uh, so anything sci-fi, I'm pretty into, but I don't get. I'm not like super nerdy or geeky about it. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about uh, that coming up uh, and stuff you should know here in just a few. But I, uh, <clears throat> there's a couple things. One, we got a fun little poll at uh, the Wake Dot Show. Um, oh yeah, yeah. By the way, share, 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 like, 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 tag your friends. Yep. Um, and let's uh, let's get this thing uh, up and running. The Wake Dot Show. I saw crossed over a uh, hundred likes. Um, you know, I, I noticed in a post Cro- over the weekend. Cross 150. Cro- oh, we crossed the 150 mark overnight, now? Overnight. Overnight. I know. We're, uh, we're building slowly but surely. <laughs> it's a good start. Yeah. So if you could share and like, um, we'll hi- we have the awake.show is where you'll find us online as well. You know, yeah. it's not the wake.show.com. It's the wake.show dot show. is the way you'll uh, type it in. Right. And we'll get some contesting up there uh, this week as well. Yeah. Good morning to uh, Mr. Cord's Owen and Jeff God Charles, I believe is how that's pronounced. That's right. Uh, so <clears throat> one of the things I put up last night, I noticed uh, my buddy Ed, uh, Ed Gruby from Events Done Right and Wild 94.1. He uh, I, I just randomly posted on Twitter that Sublime's Santeria may be, may be the best song ever made. And although I love Sublime's Santeria, it is, by no stretch of the imagination, the best song ever made. So I posted uh, you know, my top five and then asked for you guys to do the same. So my five. I want your thoughts on this there, uh, Johnny Torres. Yep. Now, now, keep in mind, this is not like my five personal favorite songs of all time. This, this is from my, my perspective, my vantage point, okay. uh, the five best songs ever made. And of course, they can be argued. Of course, you could throw something out at me and be like, oh, yeah, I should probably replace this with that. Now, it does have something to do with my like of the song. But, uh, you know, a lot of people have a misconception of me. Uh, coming from radio that I, you know, I was in radio for 25 years. And uh, for the most part during that time, music based radio. And for the most part during that time, it was uh, alternative rock or top four. I had spent plenty of time in top 40. So a lot of people assume that I'm a music connoisseur, a music nerd. I am not. All right. A lot of guys that get into radio, a lot of men and women that get into radio, they are. That's where they come from. They have such a passion for music. They want to get into that industry and see if they can be the ones to break the next big band, right? That's why I got into it. Yeah? Huge music fan. Yep. Um, I'll kill it at music trivia. So uh, this is right up my alley. Well, how long did it take you to get your bubble burst once you got into radio and realized that you're, you're, it once, wasn't in what you envisioned? Once I hit corporate radio, um, <laughs> the first few jobs I had were all for like small independent radio station owners and I loved it I loved knowing like the guy that signed my paycheck uh, once I got into the big corporate radio company uh, and you kind of just felt like a number on a paycheck at that point I'm like yeah I don't know if this is for me yeah just follow the uh, instructions yeah um, so a lot of people assume that I am just a, a just a plethora of musical knowledge and all the time throughout my career I'd be out and uh, you know you're chatting it up and man they just want to start talking about 
songs and music and these bands and deep cuts and stuff <laughs> I've never. And I'm like, listen, man, I, I, I'm I'm about to uh, shatter your image of me. But uh, I, I do a morning show. I got in the radio because, or what attracted me to radio was it was an avenue for me to be creative and sure. uh, connect and uh, be, you know have fun. It wasn't because of the music. And as a matter of fact, for the majority of my career, I would say at least half of my career, I spent trying to play less music on my show, <laughs> fighting <laughs> to play less music. Because, huh. man, like so many guys, uh, uh, when you get into radio, you, uh, you're you looking up to certain people from your Howard Stearns to, um, well, that's pretty much it. And and so you, you, you're you working towards this goal. Or I got it in my head, you know, and it was an ego-driven thing of um, I can't. You know, no matter what success I would have on a show, it wasn't my success if I'm playing more music than I am talking, sure. you know? Yeah. And so it was kind of, it was ego driven. And I also thought it was the best thing, you know, for ratings and whatnot. Because who, who gives, you're playing Bush come down for the, you know, I mean, millionth time, millionth time. Okay, I'm exaggerating. <laughs> Let's say in a, in a 10 year period, I, you know, played it 100,000 times. Sure. That might be a slight exaggeration, but I'm not sure slight. that it is. I would say slight. And so it would just make me so angry that they're trying to tell me that Bush Come Down or, you know, whatever other song that was 10 years old is, uh, you know, uh, is what people wanted to hear over, you know, my show, the show that we were putting on. Yeah. And I just couldn't wrap my ego around that. It wasn't until I got into radio that I got to appreciate talk radio. But like I said, I got into it to as someone who I was in performing arts schools. I loved music. I, I learned to play instruments. You I can sang. sing. <laughs> That's right. And so for me, I mean, at a very early age, I kind of learned about the whole struggling, starving artist thing. And I'm like, yeah, that's not that's not for me. I'm definitely not going down that road. But so I saw radio as kind of a backdoor into the music industry where I'd get to talk to artists and celebrities and things like that. And I got to do a little bit of that and host concerts and things. So I, I got my fix, uh, you know, just the the business side of it got in the way and then eventually like you i think i realized that okay i have much more to say and i i i have i'm far more interested in the the rest of the world than just what's playing on the radio right yeah and if, if it weren't i keep you know i i feel like 9 11 changed a lot of things for a lot of people and it certainly i uh, did for me um but man up until i think 9 11 I was perfectly happy just picking the superficial content of the day, the surface, what we call surface content, and uh, you know, running with it. So that's basically all pop culture stuff, you know. Yeah. And because it's easy, it's fun, uh, you know, it's not controversial usually, usually, and you just you just run with it. But then after after that, I, I just could never, I could never go back to ignoring the the real issues of the world, and and just talking about nonsense. You know what? In the end. You know, our sports and entertainment and pop culture, or am I wrong? I because it is it I, easy I, to call it nonsense, but it's really a part of who we are. We can call it pop culture, but it's really a part of our culture. It is. It is a part of our culture, and you're right. Uh, I used to kind of like, oh well, that stuff doesn't mean anything, right? You know, I was one of these guys that I was always trying to get ahead of uh, the gossip, ahead of. Um, you know, the, 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 TM the Hollywood gossip. Yeah. The TMZ stuff, like always, right. all, you know, or I would like dive deep into like an artist and what they're doing. And, uh, do you, you know, know, TMZ makes me angry. Like <laughs> look physically. If I, if when I turn it, if I'm flipping through and I, and I stop and I see a group of adults sitting around, <laughs> well, you, everybody's seen the, the effing show. Yeah. It really, it, I mean, within a matter of a second, three seconds tops, I can feel a change in my in my physiology. Sure. When I when I see a show like that, and I don't know what it is, I don't know if I just just abhor that because to me it, it those uh the paparazzi and that they are lower, they're lower than the disgusting used car salesman who's lying through his teeth to try to get you into this piece of shit car. Yeah. And I watch TMZ. I like the format. So I like the format of the show. It's okay like, if you like it. It's I, okay if it's entertaining. <laughs> You're, you and 10 million other people. I don't like the 
I don't like so much the content of the show, but I do like the format of the show. I think it's a real unique style of presenting, again, the news, even if it is the, the gossip news or the entertainment news of the day. But when they are talking about entertainment news, I do enjoy that part. It The, the harassment with the cameras and the following people around and all that stuff, that stuff irks me to no end. And, and I still say they, uh, the paparazzi as an industry was what killed uh, Lady Di. So. Uh, maybe. So here we go. Here's my uh, top five, uh, I think, uh, the best songs ever made. Beginning with Bohemian Rhapsody. By the way, I think I could switch these all around and make any one of these number one, except Country Boy Can't Survive. I believe that got in there because that is, I wanted to represent some uh, some country. Yep. And that, for whatever reason, that's a song that me and my brothers. Never heard of it. You just want you want me to pull up uh, karaoke and start singing, don't you? <laughs> I've what? never heard. Look, I've never what? heard that song. Of all the songs on that list, uh, half of at least half of which I disagree with. Uh, that <laughs> one song, I I I've never heard. I've not. I don't even know who Preacher sings it. Preacher man says it's the end of time in the Mississippi River. She's a going dry. See, I agree with Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, Ameri- you don't think American Pie should be on that list? American Pie is a, a maybe for me. I think I, I think it's a close one. You know, I think, you know, I might keep that one. Here we go. The preacher man says it's the end of time in the Mississippi River. She's a going dry. Doesn't sound familiar yet? It won't because I can't sing. A little bit, a little bit. The internet is up, the stock market's down, and you only get mugged if you go downtown. I threw internet in there to update the song since it was made sure, in 1972. Right. I live back in the woods, you see, with my woman, the kids, and the dogs, and me. Still relevant? Hey, hey wait, still doesn't sound familiar? <laughs> All right. I got a shotgun, a rifle, and a four-wheel drive, and the country boy can't survive. Slightly. Fisher boys can't survive. See, that's the way we'd sing our kids. Here we go. <clears throat> whoa. This whoa. is the well, this is the hook. I can play a feel all day long. I can catch catfish from dusk till dawn. We make girl whiskey in her own smokes too. Ain't too many things these old boys can't do. I've screwed it all up. Still nothing? Still doesn't sound familiar to you. Vaguely, vaguely. Okay. We grow good tomatoes in our homemade wine you know And the country boy can survive You know why it sounds vaguely familiar? Because it sounds just like the other song you have on the list Which is Cats in the Cradle Screw you man, it's just because I can't <laughs> sing Because here we go You can't make us run Williams boys bring his own shotguns Wait, are we reading? We say grace We say ma'am If you ain't into that We don't give a damn we came, wait, here we go. We came from the West Virginia coal mines and the Rocky Mountains and the Western skies. No, still nothing? No. Well, I guess it probably shouldn't be on the list then. I uh, <laughs> maybe I'll have to take that off. Well, if I'm going to replace it with a, a country song, maybe I should have gone with something like Friends in Low Places. Yeah, but I think you, you kind of, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure if you think, oh, I have to have a country song in there. It is just what I just, I, I think be, I don't know what it is. The I don't like all country. I do like some country. Yeah. And it seems like the country, the the I don't know the ones that tell a story. I, I don't like the country that is me. Remember when me and you sat on your grandma's porch and there was American <laughs> flags everywhere. But that's remember, to me. That's what that sounds like. We remember when we. Well, no, this is a warning, man. This was <laughs> this was 1970 something, and Hank Williams Jr. was like, listen. The stock market's down. Interest rates are up, and the stock market's down. And you're going to get mugged if you go downtown. He was talking about, you know, like everything's going to crap, you know, in the early. Well, here we are again. This is, all right, all right. I'll, I won't oversell, uh, you know, how did I put Country Boy Can't Survive after, or before Bohemian Rhapsody? That's just idiotic. That, yeah. I, I'll agree with you on that one. Uh, uh, I, I'd say Piano Man's a good one. I'd say the fact that there's a Beatles song not on that list, I think, is, is a huge flaw in your list. I, the Beatles popped in my head. Uh, I mean, although it would be hard to pick a song, right? But a day in the life may be a good one. But the, the um, thing is, is I uh, going back to me not being the music aficionado that people assumed I was because I was on the radio for so long. Uh, the Beatles, I can't believe I'm going to say this, were a little bit more on the periphery for me. 
Hmm. There, they were, you know, although like, uh, you know, if I dug through my mom's albums when I was a kid, she had Beatles albums in there and Beatles albums that had uh, newspaper clippings of the Beatles cut out of the newspaper and stuffed in there, you know, because she was a little girl sure. when she was collecting those records. Yeah. Um, it, it, yeah. I, I, the Beatles to me always sound like a very poppy, cartoony. Well, that's early Beatles. Right? I know, but, so, I, but I don't know yet. Right. But I don't know anything. Yeah, just, but see, so as a kid, I got turned on to the early Beatles, right? That's what originally got me, right? Because I think the age was right for it, right. like when when I discovered them. Help, and then, I need somebody, help. Was that, was that early? <laughs> it's a, was well, that even the Beatles? Uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it wasn't until I got older, I'd say probably until I got into college, which I think, again, age-wise, I think makes sense. Uh, I didn't grow to appreciate their later stuff until I got into college, uh, but they started doing LSD. Begin, that's right. And, uh, but beginning to end, uh, I, I'm a huge Beatles fan. So speaking of LSD, you you've never tried any drug whatsoever, right? No weed. No none. No no cocaine. Zero. No ecstasy. Nope. Man, I know, lame. No, not at all. Good for you. <laughs> so I, how how hard do you hit the bottle at that, night? That's why. <laughs> that's why I like to tell people I'm a. I'm the Dare program's one success story. Are you? Are, are do you consider yourself straight edge? Uh, no, I drink. I drink socially. Okay, you know, I'll hang out, have a couple drinks. But uh, I can tell you, the last time I got drunk was probably about four years ago. <laughs> Is that bad? I don't know. No, like, man, it's not bad. It's good. Good for you. I don't know how you do it. We need to hang out more. Or maybe maybe uh, we shouldn't hang out more. I'd, I'd be a bad influence on you. I'm trying to think. When's the last time I got drunk? Like, well, I mean, just, I mean, yesterday I had a couple of beers and a couple of drinks. I, I don't consider that being drunk, but yeah. maybe if you had consumed the same amount of alcohol I did yesterday, you would have been drunk. <laughs> Probably. Uh, let's see. Let's see. On Saturday, uh, I was at a wedding and I had two shots of Jameson there. Not drunk. You know, threw, threw it at an entire wedding. And by the way, wow. another cool wedding that I did over the weekend. By the, uh, by the way, by the way, by the way, uh, we're supposed to be doing your friend here at 730. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, you. She should be in your Skype already because I put you oh, in, in a, my Skype. Yeah, I put her in a chat group. Uh, Did we start our own uh, uh, bake more pie Skype or are we using mine? We're going to use yours for today um, just because oh, I already I already had that one ready to go. So so I just have fire <clears throat> just fire her up. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then uh, in the meantime, good morning to everybody watching. Uh, please go ahead and hit that share button if you could. Uh, it, you know, it'd be a huge help. We're obviously trying to do something very new, very different here. Uh, Jeff uh, chiming in saying American Pie, nice choice. Uh, yes, he agrees with me and saying that Cats in the Cradle. He was hearing that too in uh, the country song he played. Uh, Kelvin Holly says uh, beer, beer, truck, hey. truck, truck, beer. Um, and then... Uh, Maribel says, problem with the country is that every song is booze, a girl, and or a truck. You're being very racist. Wait, is that, is that racism? <laughs> We're going to get You're into being very that. very stereotypical when it comes to country music. They they also talk about other things. Oh, uh, did she did she mention whiskey? Uh, no, just she just generalized it with booze, booze. which okay, I think well, is appropriate. All right, that's it. Yeah. all right, how are you, Rachel? I'm good. How are y'all? Good. Are, how, uh, how's the uh, volume on your end? Uh, volume on my end is good. Okay, bring her down because she's she's hot on your end uh, there, fish. All right. Bring it down a little bit more there. Well, welcome to the Wake Dot Show. Good morning. Well, I thank you. You're I'm excited to be here. You're technically our, I guess, uh, our first guest since the hard launch. We had a week of like test shows, and then we did a, a kind of a, a soft launch on Friday. But you are our first guest, and welcome to the show. Well, I am excited to be the first guest, and I. I know why I'm here. We're going to talk Roy Moore, right? Well, listen, uh, first of all, you're not from Alabama, are you? I have been here long enough to call it home, over oh, 20 years. All right, but because uh, there's just a slight accent there, but not much. Where are you from originally? Uh, all over. All over? Auburn grad, right? Do I remember Auburn correctly? Auburn grad, yes. That's right. War, War Eagles. I know. They had a good weekend. Yeah. They actually pulled it off this weekend. I'm impressed. Big game. Uh, they beat Georgia, was it? Yeah, they weren't, yes. they weren't supposed to do that. Yeah. Well, good for no, you. No, they weren't. Well, if they'd have played like that all season, we might uh, we might be having a different story. But All right, Rachel, does uh, you, you do a, a syndicated show, or you do a show in uh, Alabama. Um, I do. News talk oriented. So, obviously, uh, this is a huge, huge story. And give us a little back, uh, uh, a little background on Roy. And should we believe the things that are coming out of his mouth now? 
this this is complicated because I, I certainly I don't ever want to not believe a, a victim of sexual assault. You you don't ever want to discredit a woman or or keep a woman from or a man from coming forward uh, in the event that there was actually uh, something that transpired. But I certainly do have questions and okay. I have not been a, a fan of Roy Moore. I have not been a supporter of Roy Moore. I actually wanted Mo Brooks uh, to win the primary. Mel Brooks was running? Uh, Mo Brooks. Oh, oh. I'd want, I'd Congress, want, I'd want Mel Brooks too. Mo Brooks was running. <laughs> uh, th- that's who I was actually behind uh, initially. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. It ended up between Luther Strange and, and Roy Moore. The, the biggest questions I have is one, the timing. I find the timing suspect. Uh, the Washington Post just happened to be in Alabama. They happened to come across somebody who was talking about this. I, okay. I want to take them to Vegas because in 38 years of Roy Moore's campaign, they're campaigning for, for various offices. There's not been a, a lot of rumor or inkling of, about this. Well, what, so okay, so one has to... Ooh. Well, I mean, the Washington Post could have very easily been out there looking for stuff, and they did stumble across this person. But one of the the intriguing things about her story is that when they went to uh, uh, corroborate this, they found that she had told people 40 years ago about this, right? Well, she had told people she was dating an older man, uh, per the story, that she was seeing an older man. Uh, that or some of her friends said this was not a good idea. Apparently, she told her mother about this in the in the early nineties. Uh, what had happened between so she, her and Roy Moore? Okay, so she, the the initial uh, initial story she told wasn't the story about how he got me naked and tried to touch me. It was just I'm dating an older man. But, well, and it, 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 I, I'm unsure about exactly what she told okay. her fourteen year old friends, but. Uh, it, 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 Yes, that she was seeing another man, an older man, rather, and some of her friends had said, you know, this is not a good idea. Don't see an older man. And I, But it, some of my other questions arise, like, where was the mother? Where was the mother of a 14-year-old girl uh, to let her go off with a 32-year-old I mean, man it was, to his it, is, home? it was Alabama in the 70s. I mean, I'm not trying to well, be... It, okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> uh, but not once, but twice, because she says the first time she went, he kissed her. She asked him to take her home. He did that. And uh, then she went back. She met him at the same spot. Now, I know Breitbart uh, put out a story yesterday saying that uh, there was holes in the story because uh, the girl had said, or the woman now, said that there was a, uh, she talked to to him on the phone and her mother said she didn't have a phone in her room. Any of us that remember the phone, remember that you could get one of those cords that you could, you know, run all through the house. (laughs) Yep. <laughs> and, and get to pretty much any room in the house you wanted to. So I, I don't know that that holds a lot of water. Uh, Roy Moore is certainly standing by his story. He is saying that absolutely at no time did this happen. I think the three other women are absolutely irrelevant in this. Uh, are because they, wh- the legal age of consent in Alabama at the time was 16. It still is 16. Uh, the one woman that he met at the mall supposedly uh while she was at an elf or, or something at uh, Santa's helper, she uh, was 14 at the time, but said he waited until she was 16 to ask her out. That's he's chivalrous. Um, the other two were uh, <laughs> one was in college and uh, one was uh, 18, I believe, at the time that they dated. So they were of legal age. Uh, the only questionable thing is that perhaps he gave one of them a uh, matus. Uh, on a date before the, before she was 19, which was the legal drinking age at the time then. Oh, well, there's always that. Uh, so how do you think this is going to play out then? I see this morning that he is contemplating or his people are contemplating suing the Washington Post. I saw that this morning. I, you know, it's... I'm seeing a lot of Doug Jones signs. He is the Democrat that's running for office. I'm seeing a lot of Doug Jones signs, but in fairness, I didn't see a lot of... Uh oh. Eh. Check test one two. <laughs> Looks like she froze up on us. This, and I think you have to look at. Uh, oh oh. Patience. There we go. Sorry, we're, you're cutting out a little bit, uh, Rachel. Uh, not not really sure why, but. Uh, I, I 
Sorry about that. No, I'm sure um, it's, uh, I'm we sure don't it's, know where it's, where it's sure originating it's from. So. It's probably me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, the, you have to look at the potential motivation because you have uh, Mitch McConnell and his super PAC who threw millions of dollars into the state of Alabama during the primary race. Uh, you look back at Herman Cain, you had all these women accusers when Herman Cain was running for office. Herman Cain drops out of the race, and lo and behold, you have... They all disappear. They all disappeared. So, uh, you know, but I think it does give it some credibility that these women came forward with their names. They're not anonymous. And uh, you have to look at that, too. Like I said, so I, I would imagine this goes away then. A, a potential victim. Yeah, I imagine this but, goes away because, uh, you know, first of all, it's 40 years old. And if he stands, if he keeps denying, 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 it's just going to be he said, she said. And this goes away, I would imagine. There's well, and that's the, that's the whole problem I have with this. You know, it is he said, she said. We're we're four weeks out from uh, the general election. You have to understand that there's not going to be time to properly investigate this. And ultimately... It is a he said, he said, she said uh, situation. And what I don't want to see, and I'm trying to be objective about this, is that we set a precedent in this country where just because she said doesn't mean it's necessarily true. And, th and that should not be the burden of proof that we go on. No. And yeah. unfortunately, you look at the UVA rape case and uh, other situations like Mattress Girl. Uh, you've got situations where people have fabricated these stories and they've, they've turned out to be absolute. Uh, but the, the uh, um, one of the differences, though, is the Washington Post did seem to do their due diligence on this. And I don't know if it was because of that uh, Duke lacrosse. Is that what you were referencing when you said UVA rape or are we talking about? Yes. yes. Yeah. The Duke lacrosse. Right. And, yeah. um, you know, when uh, the Rolling Stones ran with the that. Rolling Stones, right. yes. There's another or one. Rolling Stone, not the Rolling Stones. Rolling Stone <laughs> ran with that story. But they, but if we, you read that story, they, you know, uh, journalists said that short story should have never even been published. There was not enough journalistic integrity within that story. But it fit a narrative. Of course, it's true. They're frat boys. Of, that's all they do is rape. And uh, we'll just run with it. So oh, right, exactly, and that's and that's again with the precedent. You know, you've got all of these allegations coming out of Hollywood now. You've got Harvey Weinstein, you've got Kevin Spacey, uh, Louis C.K., and the list seems to be uh, getting continually yep. longer. Steven Seagal, I think, right. just made the list. Oh, he's well, been on it for uh, a little while. He's been on, he was one of the first ones on it, believe it or not. Well, and to add to what Rachel's saying, you know, there's now uh, some stories coming out, or there's some at least some journalists speaking out about how even SNL chose to. Uh, to mock or parody Roy Moore uh, right in his situation, but completely went silent on the whole Weinstein situation. Um, and and No, that's not true. I, you obviously just watch uh, right-wing uh, <laughs> bullshit and don't watch SNL uh, because the fact of the matter is they did not do a skit to parody um, the evils of Weinstein, but they had uh, commentary. Okay. Um, throughout the show and there was actually one skit it was not the week that it broke but the week following where uh there was four women on a panel and uh, one of them is uh supposed to play this old hollywood you know you know from like the, the 50s or 60s you know something like that and th they got a lot of jokes in there about okay. about it but uh, well and i haven't watched i've missed a few I episodes know. i still watch snl i mean um but i did want to ask rachel uh two things right so breitbart is coming into Alabama, right? So they've announced that they're going to be going into Alabama and kind of digging deep into this to uh, potentially discredit Washington Post or to uh, basically bring to light maybe other things that uh, that the Washington Post didn't discover. Uh, do you think that helps or hurts the situation? And then also, if you could touch on, because you and I talked about this offline, which is uh, the, the potential of a write-in campaign that might be orchestrated here by... Mitch McConnell and maybe some of the establishment Republicans. Well, and that goes back to the whole motivation thing that you have to look at because you've got Mitch McConnell who spent, uh, like I said, millions of dollars dumping money into the state of Alabama trying to get Luther Strange elected. And essentially, you've got Mitch McConnell and Steve Bannon who are at war. Uh, Steve Bannon came to Alabama. He campaigned for Roy Moore. He endorsed Roy Moore. Mitch McConnell uh, pulled out all the stops, the Hail Mary at the end, sending Donald Trump uh, here to on, on Luther Strange's behalf, 
sent Mike Pence here on Luther Strange's behalf, and it still was not enough. This is a this is a Bannon McConnell war. So well, you do it, have to look at that as uh, as a potential motivation. You know, I go back in the to end. Will, in, in, in the end, will the people of believe it was the the Democrats who sabotaged Herman Cain? I think it was the GOP. So that that is potentially something something to look at again, not to discredit these women, but uh, to say that. Uh, there are other factors at play here. All right. And uh, lastly, how is, how are the – because I, I don't know that whatever Mitch McConnell is doing or Steve Bannon is doing is going to matter in the end. I think the people of Alabama probably already have in their head if they're standing behind this guy or not standing behind behind this guy. What do you think is going to happen? I, I, think, uh, what there, I think there was new polls out yesterday. They showed that Doug Jones was in the lead. I think that Roy Moore's base, I think it's going to be a tight race. And right. I have said uh, but prior to this whole scandal that uh, we have the potential because Roy Moore is such a dividing figure uh, that we have the potential to uh, absolutely elect a, a Democrat in, in Alabama. Will it happen? Yeah, I don't know. But uh, Roy Moore's base is going to stand with him. They're going to stand firm. They're going to call it all nonsense. They're going to say it never happened, and they're going to credit these women at all cost. Uh, you have a lot of moderate people, especially in your larger areas, who are probably going to go with Doug Jones or they're going to stay home. Uh, Rachel Hammers, where can uh, people check you out online when you're doing your show? And what time? Uh, you can wtkiradio.com hit the listen live button between 4 and 6 p.m. central time thank you very much rachel hammers thank y'all have a great day you too congratulations on the show thank you very much all right rachel's good people man uh it's uh you know she's got a very unique voice uh you know just given her background she's a mom of two daughters and uh again kind of living in uh, alabama for a long time and and uh, she she really keeps a good pulse. I mean, she's been uh, she's fairly new to the radio game, but she's been winning all kinds of awards and stuff. So I thought she'd be a great fit to bring on, especially given the uh, the uh, subject of the matter. So do you think the little uh, the, the glitchiness uh, was on our end or her end or is that hard to tell? Hard to tell, um, but uh, it, it seems like it may just be like an internet issue. So, yeah, if she's not hardwired in, if she's on Wi-Fi, that sort of thing. I mean, we're on Wi-Fi, so it, it, it seemed like that was more the issue there. Uh, let's get to stuff you should know. Welcome to the Wake Dot Show, by the way, with Fisher and Johnny Torres. Uh, the Wake Dot Show. Make sure if if you're watching this through my personal page or through Fisher the Man. Wait, have I have, have you shared any of this this morning? <laughs> so I shared it to the Fish of the Man page. You may want to share it to your yeah, personal account. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, I did share it to your page. I shared it to um, my personal account and uh, and my page. So uh, we we highly encourage everyone to do the same. I mean, uh, you know, this this uh, account project success is, uh, is is completely dependent on uh, those of you watching. Oh, or hold on, our favorite part of the show the. The uh, the, in- the inception part of the <laughs> That's show. Right. Uh, good morning to Sandra, leaving us a nice little good morning message. Uh, my buddy Joe Wicker joining us again, and Patricia. Uh, hi to everybody watching. Good morning. That's good enough for now. Share. Um, yeah, uh, thank you so much for uh, all the sharing and uh, likes and whatnot. Let's get to some uh, stuff you should know. Uh, L.A. writer uh, says Richard Dreyfus sexually harassed and exposed himself to her back in the 1980s. Um, let's see here. Six days ago, the actor and writer Harry Dreyfus gave a detailed account to BuzzFeed News alleging that Kevin Spacey groped his crotch when he was 18 while his father Richard Dreyfus was in the room. Richard confirmed to BuzzFeed that he didn't see the groping and didn't know about it until his son told him years later, but was present the night Harry says it occurred. Spacey knew he could uh, fondle me in a room with my father, and I wouldn't say a word, wrote Harry. He knew I wouldn't have the guts, and I didn't. A few hours after the story was published, Richard tweeted a statement in support of his son. I love my son more than I could explain with all the words in the world, and I'm so incredibly pl- proud of him right now, talking about how he came out and talked about this. Uh, it was a response that many plotted, but a Los Angeles space writer, Jessica Teak, read the elder Dreyfus' uh, tweet, and she grew bothered by it. She says, when I read about his support for her son, which I would never question, I remember thinking, but wait, this guy harassed me for months. 
He was in a position of so much power over me, and I didn't feel I could tell anybody about it. It just seemed so hypocritical. She began drafting a Facebook post that she shared with her friends, one of whom is a New York staff member who gave Teak my, uh, my number. The harassment, she says, was constant over a two- to three-year period in the mid-'80s when she worked as a researcher and junior writer on a TV passion project for Dreyfus and include an incident where she says he exposed herself to him, uh, himself to her. Uh, so uh, Dreyfus is now the next man on this uh, list uh, as far as uh, people going down. Which is unfortunate. I mean, he's one of those actors that you definitely, you know, there's certainly the wine scenes, right, where nobody's uh, seemingly very surprised about that whole thing. Um, but then you've got, again, someone like uh, Richard Dreyfus who you wouldn't expect to be in this kind of a situation. I mean, uh, there, there was a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek thing going around the Internet, you know, where... Um, well, we're not allowed to do tongue in cheeks anymore because that's sexual <laughs> harassment. No more tongue in cheeks. <laughs> but there was this post going around where it's, uh, you know, a woman comes out and accuses Tom Hanks of being too nice or something like that. And, uh, oh, that's hilarious. You know, but, uh, you know, are we setting ourselves up for disappointment? You know, that you got to wonder now as this li- list gets deeper and deeper. Um, George Takai blames Russian bots for trying to amplify sexual assault accusation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But hold on. There might be something. When I first saw this, I'm like, George, what are you doing? Oh, my. <laughs> um, well, and the worst part is, is that he basically admitted to it on the Howard Stern show, as many people tend to divulge things they wouldn't normally do. Um, and uh, and they're just, again, they're just putting back out into the universe something that he had already uh, discussed openly. He said uh, George Takai had an out-of-this-world explanation for why so many people were talking about the sexual assault claim against him. He says it is because of the Russians. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I thought. I thought it was the Russians all along. Yeah, uh, Takai, the quote-unquote Takai, had increased popularity almost 20,000%, and George Takai had jumped more than 15,000%. Quote, it's clear they want to cow me into silence, but do not fear, friends. I won't succumb to that, Takai wrote. Or Takei. Um, Joe, Joe Wicker writes, hide your wife, hide your kids. That's funny. I definitely, I, and look, as someone who grew up in performing arts, you know, doing musical theater, doing music and that sort of thing. There's that, a lot of line crossing in uh, that, that world from what I understand. Well, but, and it's definitely not an and industry. And thespian sex parties. <laughs> Is that true? I always heard there was, after every show, there was a thespian uh, sex party. No. No? No, definitely not. Well, then I'm glad I didn't join the thespians in high school. But uh, I wouldn't subject my kids to, to the Hollywood or music industry. Not not at a young age. What about your experiences in uh, the performing arts? No, well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, as, as much as I love doing that sort of thing, I don't think I'd push my kids, you know, as we see many parents often do. There's a whole documentary about it, about parents who basically moved to L.A. To, in the hopes to make their kids uh, celebrities. And uh, I, I just I think that's what creates this kind of environment. Uh, the fact that they are willing to do anything and everything. Sell to, out their own kid. Yeah. To be successful, to be a celebrity, to be an actor, actress, musician, whatever it is. So here's George Takei says this is this is why he thinks it's the Russians, because it's not the first time. Quote, by way of background, when I criticize Putin's anti LGBT policies publicly, Russian bots attacked my Facebook page relentlessly and we had to develop special security measures and ban all traffic from within Russian Federation and the Ukraine. I'm accustomed to their practices. Now, uh, the guy that allegedly was assaulted, Brunton told The Hollywood Reporter that became friends with Takei when he was 23 and the actor was in his mid-40s. The two met at dinner one night and went back to Takei's condo where uh, Brunton, Brunton had two drinks and began to feel dizzy. I thought I was going to pass out. I said I needed to sit down and he said, sit over here. And he had a giant yellow beanbag, big beanbag chair. Uh, the next thing I remember, I was coming to, and he had my pants down around my ankles, and he was groping my crotch and trying to get my underwear off and feeling me up at the time, trying to get his hands down my underwear. Uh, Takei has denied these allegations. Quote, I want to ensure you all that I am as shocked and bewildered at these claims as you must feel reading them. The events he describes back in the 1980s did not simply did not occur, and I uh, do not know why he has claimed them now. I have racked my brain to ask if I remember Mr. Brunton, and I cannot say that I do. He also called it a he said he said situation that took place almost 40 years ago. 
So I had uh, George Takai to the list now. It was, it was funny. Well, when, uh, when Johnny texted me over, he sent me the story over the, or just like a blurb or real quick. And yeah. I, and I, because you said something about uh, adding uh, George Takai to the list. Yeah. The, the, Weinstein, the Weinstein list. The Weinstein list. I'm like, well, I guess, uh, I guess on the, the silver lining is that uh, Weinstein um, will rape anything, <laughs> which was a horrible joke that was just intended between me and Johnny Torres and That's never right. to go out publicly. So it won't. <laughs> um, well, and to me, the red flag in this story was uh, the yellow beanbag chair. What's a grown man doing with a yellow beanbag chair? Hmm. Well, I'm not going to answer that question because <laughs> that part of the story, I'm like, that's pretty cool. I want a yellow I want a beanbag chair. <laughs> uh, on with stuff you should know. Um, and not everything's going to be serious, by the way. Not everything is about sexual assault or... Uh, you know, foreign policy or anything like that. Some of it has just has to do with heart stopping sex. <laughs> when sex is, uh, this is coming from uh, nationalpost.com. I don't know anything about this website. All I know is when sex is heart stopping, lovers are reluctant to perform CPR, according to a study. While a new study found a low chance of sudden cardiac arrest after sex, a low chance of dying after sex. When it does happen, it seems like those who are not suffering the cardiac arrest don't do anything. Two thirds of the time, they don't do anything. They don't try to administer CPR. Is it because they panic? Is it because they don't know what to do? Is it because I'm thinking you're like I can't top that? <laughs> you're, you're, you're on. A, I, I, or is it because they're misreading the situation? Maybe they think the they're just still the the <laughs> O is uh, still going. <laughs> oh, uh, wow! I really rocked that. Ugh. Uh, sex is rarely a trigger for a sudden cardiac arrest, but when it happens, only a third of people who collapse during sex are likely to receive CPR from their partner. Uh, researchers examined more than 4,500 cases. So this is not 30 cases. This is not 80 cases. Yeah. 4,500 cases of sudden cardiac arrest found a total of 34 linked to sexual activity, and 94% of them were men. So it's... That part makes sense. <laughs> yeah. However, their partners were alarmingly reluctant to attempt CPR. This likely explains the relatively low survival rates, despite mostly shockable initial cardiac arrest rhythms. Um, the findings surprised and puzzled the researchers. Quote, there is plenty of evidence that performing CPR by bystanders until the ambulance arrives translates to significantly better survival for cardiac arrest. I think what it is, Johnny, is they... I, I think you only have time to call nine one one and get cleaned up. You can't see, you can't sit there and you know giving compressions because you're butt naked and you got God knows what's dripping off you. Sure, and then somebody shows up and then it, you right. know, it's or maybe you're not supposed to be there in the first place. So I think what you need to do is you need to try. We what we needed, you know, how they have CPR classes. Yeah, there need to be CPR classes for you know specific situations, scenario training. So if something like this goes down, you know how to go, you know, come one, two, three, and then you you take a wet night, wet wipe, one, two, three, oh, get God. back to one, two, three, <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three, you know, and so on and so forth until you got your you're cleaned up and you got your clothes on. I, I think it's the shock of 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 that happening in that instance. I think that's the that's what's going on there. I see. Well, if it were me, right. All of a sudden, uh, you know, my, we're in our later years because, you know, my wife, it's her birthday today. She's 31. Nice. I probably shouldn't have said that. Uh, it's her birthday today. I don't know how old she is. She's in her 20s. <laughs> and uh, but, you know, so later on in life when this happens, if all of a sudden I don't know that I'm bringing her back because I, I can't top that. I'd be like, yeah, you know, it was so good. It, it, she just that was it. <laughs> and so maybe we should just leave it as is. Because if I bring her back, I can't do that again. Right. You know, I just mm, hit it so good. You almost died. Right, or she, or or she did, so I think that's just a great way to go out. Why, why bring? Hold on, you brought me back. I'm gonna die anyway. I just went out right after a great orgasm, and you brought me back for what? That, for what? I mean, so I can grow old. If you're gonna die, I mean, that's that's a way to go. By definition, a cardiac arrest occurring during sexual activity is witnessed by a partner, and if CPR would have been initiated by the partner, this would have likely saved some lives. Sex isn't without risk, they write. In one German study, 0.2% of something odd, 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 autopsied, autopsied natural deaths. Oh, I see, autopsy. Uh, we're linked to sex. 
It is also recognized that sexual activity may trigger non-fatal acute cardiac events such as other things. And <laughs> <laughs> next. Next with stuff you should know. Go Bucks. Woohoo! I know not everybody listening is a Buccaneer fan. Not everybody's listening or, or streaming this. Not listening or watching. Streaming this. Are uh, huge Buck fans, but I uh, thought if I was a betting man yesterday, I would have put all every dime I had on the Jets. See, first, my first reaction to that headline is who? Ryan Fitzpatrick. I had no idea who that is. Yeah, neither does anybody else. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick, but uh, uh, Jameis Winston is on the sidelines, re-injured his shoulder, and the Buccaneers get a win. Very nice. Very nice. Fire the cannons. <laughs> That a uh, five-game losing streak, if I remember correctly, going into the uh, weekend and pulled it out. Well, and there was such a buildup before the season that they were going to have a great season. And by all indications, that was going to be the case. And somehow it's fallen apart. I don't think to the extent of anybody getting fired or anything like that, like we're seeing in college football. But uh, certainly it's been a disappointing season uh, for the fans. Well, I, I hope uh, this is good. I guess I love the Bucks, man. And, you know, it was two weekends ago. Uh, they're playing the Saints. I was just sitting there on the couch, just riddled with anxiety because they just, excuse me, looked so horrible. And then there was the incident where Winston comes off the uh, the uh, sideline. Oh, the poking incident. Yeah, the poking incident and Mike Evans, that whole thing. And I'm just watching this. And I'm going, why am I doing this to myself? It's a beautiful day. I could be out enjoying nature, but I'm in here riddled with anxiety because my Tampa Bay Buccaneers are stinking up the joint. Yeah. Um. But... Uh, but this, this, you know, on Sunday, I it was just on the background because I was, you know, I'm a homeowner now. Oh, excuse me. I'm a no homeowner. I said homeowner. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm a homeowner. Thought we were now. breaking news here for a minute. Not a homo. I'm a homeowner <laughs> now, and uh, and I mean, I might dress like, uh, you know, a, but but I'm way too fat to be gay. Shirt's getting a little tight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's why it's been in the closet for the past, uh, you, you know, I, this is my last shirt today. Here, Here's my dilemma, John. Is it laundry day? It's been laundry day for about a week. Okay. As a matter of fact, do both cameras work or just this, the the wide? Uh, both cameras work now. All right. So you're going to need a tight on this one. I'm in tight. Okay. Well, let's, let's That's bring, what she's let's bring, let's bring Facebook back up here. Let's bring the uh, feed back up if you guys don't mind because I have to show you something. And I want to see it. Well, and a quick hello to my buddy Ian, David, watching. Uh, we got a solid audience here for episode one. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, if you don't mind, hit that share button. Help us uh, grow our audience here as we uh, start to build a very new kind of different project here. We are looking to be a uh, local online only morning show. All right. So you ready? <clears throat> All right. Uh it's been a, a laundry day was about a week ago, and I've been uh, I've been I've been scraping the bottom of the hamper. Uh, for it's just because we we just ordered a washer and dryer yesterday. You know, it's mm -hmm. you know I you know it's just one of those things. Right. So the pants that I'm wearing today. Okay. Are are the only really clean things that I have. The only <laughs> issue is. Well, jeans are always clean, right? Uh, can you see this? Oh, gee. oh my God! What are you Where, doing? Which side is it on? Oh, yeah, it's, it, we saw it. We hey, saw it. There's a hole in here. <laughs> we, you see that? Oh, yeah, we see it. <laughs> I have a hole. So this is the first show, right? And you've exposed yourself to our brand new audience. Now I'm watching my. Now I'm watching myself dig into my own butt. <laughs> uh. it's, so the inaugural show, the Wake Dot Show of the Wake Dot Show. We're going to get added to the Weinstein list. <laughs> We're going to get flagged by uh, by Facebook. That's right. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I, the plan was today to drop a bunch of stuff off at the dry cleaners. Yeah, that's what Elliot was just saying here in the comments. And, and at the same time, take everything else. And to speaking of dry cleaners, David Capote is watching, who owns Capote's Cleaners on Kennedy. Oh, you're right around the corner here. Yeah, man. Damn it. I'm in South St. Pete. I should have brought. I should have, if, I, if I had my hamper in the uh, oh. in the car. So here was the uh, uh, initial plan. Okay, uh, I was going to do laundry all day today, but then I remembered today is my wife's birthday. Ooh. No, no, no. I already remembered that. I already remembered that. What I had forgot and then remembered was that she took to today, uh, today off. So I don't have a free day. I thought I had a free day today to get caught up on stuff. You know? Sure. Yeah. And I do not. 
Not only that, but I also thought I had until she got off work tonight <laughs> to get her something. Also, not happening. Uh, well, I got to do something, and I hate that I, I'm the, I'm not a great gift giver yeah. unless I've got money. And then, you know, you're getting, you know, $100 to $500 worth of stuff. Right. But that's still the thing, same thing. I'm going to wait till the last minute to go into stores that and pay too much for stuff and then go, well, at least I spent a few hundred dollars and, and here we go. Um, when well, you said she doesn't like it when you buy her stuff. No. It is very difficult. So we just, you're like, oh, fish, man, we just bought it. You just got a new house. There's got to be a million things you could buy her. I can't. I can't buy her one thing because it won't match. You know, <laughs> uh, everything that's going to go in the house, she's going to have to approve or be a part of. Okay. Or else uh, it is going to drive her insane. And so there's nothing I could buy for the house or buy her. No, pic- come on, you can do a picture frame. No, because we still haven't got uh, the stuff in the house. You know, we start still looking for furniture, bedroom set. So you haven't oh. figured out the design yet. Right. So I can't go buying, uh, you know, like I wanted to print out some pictures of us and the dogs, you know, and, and whatnot. Yep. And, uh and get some picture frames. No, I can't, I can't do that yet. I can't uh, do any wall art. Well, a, a rug, enough, all this stuff that the house needs, but I need her for everything. Well, and even getting into a kitchen appliance can be very, very tricky because you buy the wrong kitchen appliance and you could be in some hot water. And then there was, yeah, because there's some things that are still broken around the house. By the way, for those of you flipping houses, <laughs> oh, gee. for those of you flipping houses, uh-huh. Take take some take some pride in what you do, and there are some good remodelers and flippers out there. There are, yeah. Some of them are friends, but it it it's every day I'm finding something new. <clears throat> like uh, I, I, and these might seem like little things, but these are just the latest things. The they painted the back porch, you know, uh, the the floor, yep, and the garage floor. Uh, and the the garage floor immediately the paint so like as soon as you turn your wheel that it it rips right the, the paint right off and both those things are bubbling now so you know it was just a cheap ass job they're like well yeah what do you expect you know that's all they do you know and who cares uh, if there's a paint on the you know and I was like all right but well and they should have sealed the garage floor and not painted it or, or, yeah, right um, and then um, you know yesterday uh, we see <clears throat> there's two sliders you know in the house yeah and one slider the little strip that goes down the edge there you see. You know, it's tacked in. It's got a screw, 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 screw all the way down from the top of the from the ceiling to the floor. In the other room, somebody put one at the top, stripped it. You could tell that he couldn't get it all in the way in, in there, and then just said F it. And there's not one, not one <clears throat> screw, just all the rest up. of the way down. Yeah. And I know that seems like rid- ridiculous, but I could go through ten things that I just can't believe that you could just tell people don't care. Yeah. And it might not be the guy who flipped the house. It could be he, he, he contracts could be somebody. Could contractor, right. And it might even be the contractor. The contractor might uh, yeah. take some pride, but is assuming that the people that are working under him are doing things the way they're supposed to do it. Can I ask you guys something? Do you know anything about uh, um, code? Like, we realized once we had bought the house and got in there that there was not one fire alarm in the place. Oh, Like, to me, I feel like that shouldn't have passed inspection, yet... The inspection did take place, and that was never brought up. Yeah, just like in the uh, the the uh, the guest bathroom, the handle only turns a quarter of the way Weird. up, so it only gets lukewarm in that. And you go, well, fish. All you got to do is pop off the uh, handle. There's a little uh, a set screw in there. You move that, and it'll turn up. Yes, yes. You would think it would be that easy, <laughs> but there's a little tiny hole underneath that little handle. Is this boring everybody, by the way, my homeowner problems? <laughs> I understand. We'll get back to stuff you should know in a minute. But there's a little hole at the bottom of this thing. And it looks like that's where an Allen wrench goes or something of the sort. Well, I've had three different guys in there with Allen wrenches trying to figure out how to get this thing off. And these are not just random people. These are people that, uh, you know, do they're not they weren't plumbers but they are handymen yeah and uh they're like i I don't know i don't know what to tell you if uh that if the the allen wrench thing is in is has been uh stripped or there's something else going on but we can't figure out how to get this damn thing off so it's just another thing plus we you see that the the new washer has got a huge dent in the bottom of it you see that the hood has got a dent in it you're like well so did this guy fill this new place with scratch and dent stuff probably and including the uh the granite table uh you know the counter you there's a chunk out of the granite 
you know, so it's just like all these things that you didn't see in the beginning. And as you're going through the just every single day, there seems to be something else. Yeah. Welcome to home ownership, fish. Welcome to home ownership. No, screw you, buddy. There should have been at least uh, some basic stuff, you know, already and I, handled and I, before we moved in. And I think you're exactly right. I mean, at the end of the day, these guys are looking to make a profit, right? And uh, and they will cut corners because cutting those corners helps Oops. them make a bigger profit. I mean, it's unfortunate, but um, again, I, I know that's part of the game. That is part of the game. I've seen it done, and it's it's. So what very do you common. do? Because you think when you bring out the inspector, the inspector is going to point out everything to you. We had to point stuff out to the inspector, and not only that, but like I, there's one part where you know they have to get up in the uh, the this rafters, you know, in the ceiling. Well, the the entrance, there's not. Uh, no adults fitting in. I don't even know that a six-year-old could fit up in there and, and get around. But you open that up and you see the inspector's card like, hey, I was here. Yeah, you, you, what would you do, this? <laughs> yep, it's got a ceiling. Next. Huh. So now I, I'm not even confident that the uh, the guy that did the inspection, since he didn't point out that there were no fire alarms, no sp- I mean, you know, smoke alarms, smoke detectors. And you're right. It may be a, a, a code thing where maybe that, bill, that home was grandfathered in because it's an older home. But something as important as that, you would think, would right. wouldn't be exempt. All right, enough of my bitching about to home home ownership. We'll do more tomorrow. <clears throat> uh, let's get back to the NFL real quickly. Did you see that only three NFL players kneeled over the weekend? Remember, Veterans Day is on Saturday. It was sure. uh, the eleventh, and uh, come Sunday, it was me very curious around the league as the league celebrated veterans, what players would do, and nearly everybody in the league stood, except for three. Those three players, three players took a knee during the uh, national anthem before the New York Giants game at the San Francisco 49ers while the rest of the league stood during Veterans Day weekend. Good. 49ers uh, Eric Reed and Marquise Goodwin, both of whom have been protesting for most of the season, knelt as did Giants defensive end Oliver Olivier Vernon, who was uh, just activated. Vernon had been protesting while he was injured. Um, David Lombardi of the Athletic Later tweeted a photo of Reed embracing an Air Force member. Reed has said the protest is not about the military. Quote, this is not about the military. This is not about the flag. This is not about the anthem. My mother served in the armed forces. Three of my uncles served in the armed forces. I have the utmost respect for the military, for the anthem, for the flag. This is about systemic oppression, and that has been rampant in this country for decades on top of decades, unquote. Well, and that's been the biggest flaw in this whole protest has been when and where they chose to do it. Uh, it, it. It could have even been at any other point during the game. And honestly, I felt if they wanted to be taken seriously, they just don't show up for the game. But they're not going to do that because they want to continue to collect their buco paychecks. Yeah. And uh, and so they- it's had an impact, though. I mean, you, you started seeing it's crossed sports. Yep. And not only that, but it's crossed the pond. There were uh, football players, soccer players uh, kneeling in protest like in Germany or Greece or Spain or something like that uh, last week or the week before. But it's also had an adverse effect on the NFL as well. Their ratings are down. Their attendance is down. Um, and but I, I think I think people are trying to put too much into this protest. I, I, I It might be a contributing factor. But I think the numbers in the NFL are down, not solely based on no, this. no, 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 definitely not. But I think this has exacerbated that issue uh, because we are seeing down, uh, we, we're seeing attendance down in in professional sports in general. Uh, but I think this has become a huge problem for them. They're seeing the impact that the protests on both sides has had an effect on the league, and uh, to the point where now Jerry Jones, it looks like he's going to start a campaign to stop Roger Goodell's uh, contract extension, and I think this uh, is is a part of that. $47 million a year? Is that what? $47 yes. and a half? Yes. Like, good for him. And a jet for life. Yeah. Uh, contract negotiations make you... Re- if those things ever get divulged, it makes you sound like a complete a-hole a prima donna who has no grip on reality. I would say that a jet for life kind of... Uh, reinforces that, yeah, yeah. He wanted a health care for life from uh, paid for by the NFL, and the health care I can get yeah. that that I understand. Yeah, okay, it comes I don't some, think that's you know that's unreasonable, right? That comes with some pensions and stuff, right? Yeah, and uh, yeah, but I want use of the NFL's jet for life. When I see when I see that, I go, he doesn't really want that. There's something else he wants, but he's going to throw the jet in there. So they say no, no, we'll compromise, and you get this. That's what I'm thinking, because what an asinine thing to ask for. Yeah. Um, 
We'll get back to stuff you should know here in just a second. Welcome to the Wake Dot Show. I'm Fisher, along with uh, Johnny Torres. Share, like, share, like, share, like. Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Yeah. Um, let's get back to... Do you have the list of songs that people order? Do I have it? Uh, just, just out of curiosity. I can pull it up. I got the page here open. I need to come. I need to be a little bit more efficient when it comes to stuff like this. Where did all that stuff? <clears> go? <throat> I just, just want to see. Just, Let's just see. give me my damn profile. Well, I got it pulled up on the page. There we go. All right. So the uh, five five best songs ever made. It uh, it spawned from a conversation I had with Ed Gruby from Events Done Right last night on Twitter when he said that Sublime Santeria might be the best song ever made. <laughs> Thought about it for a few seconds. <laughs> I don't practice Santeria. I ain't got no crystal ball. Mm-hmm. Good song. Really good song. If it ends up on somebody's top 25 list, I'm not mad. But possibly the greatest song. God, best. I, think, I think even that's a stretch. Yes, but uh, I'll give you that stretch. Uh, but to uh, say it might be the best song ever made, it just uh, made me think of so many other songs. So here we go. Kane Long. Here's his top five. Stairway to Heaven, number five. Not bad. Four, War Pigs. Three, We Will Rock You. Number two, Paul Revere. Nice. Hmm. And number one, Rapper's Delight. Hmm. Hmm. Not a bad list at all. I'll say that's a uh, more than likely a northeasterner there, right in that list. First of all, I that first song, whatever that first song was, War Pigs. Is that what it is? I, I was never... say, Now here's a little story I got to tell about three bad brothers you know so well. It started way back in history, history. with that ad rock MCA in my Mike D. It's been a little horsey named Paul Revere. This me in my horsey and a quart of beer. Riding across the land. Bring, bring, bring the track down. Bring the track down. One lonely beastie I be. All by myself without nobody. All right, that's enough of that. That's enough of that. Just reminded me of that picture I posted on my daughter this week. This past week. Ah, yes. That was awesome. Adorable picture. I love it, man. Target, man. Killing it with the uh, the kitty shirts of bands and stuff. So uh, that's become... I've decided that that's become my thing, right? So um, I buy her t-shirts of bands that that i like predominantly her mom got her a david bowie shirt cool uh very cool shirt uh i'm i've never gotten that much into david bowie i didn't tell after he died oh really i mean space oddity is one of my favorite songs yeah um you know ground control to major very tone. cool song yeah um but uh but yeah, I didn't get a chance to appreciate. Of course, when he dies, and then they 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 put up an hour long episode on David Bowie on uh, whatever music channel I was watching, Palladia, and you're like, man, I really wish I would have gotten into him earlier on in life. Yeah, but that happens every time somebody dies. <laughs> wow, I didn't realize how cool that guy was. So got her a couple Beatles shirts, got her BC Boys, got her uh, Jimi Hendrix shirt, uh, David Bowie. I like the collection I've got. So nice, far. Yeah. nice. Rhonda Lee, here's her top five. Hotel California. Okay, yeah. I, 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 could, I could get behind that. Purple Rain. Yep. He Stopped Loving Her Today. What's that one? Is that a country song? No. It sounds could, like a country song. It, it definitely sounds like a country song. Not, But again. Can you sing it? No, I have no idea. Do I have to pull it up on uh, He Stopped Loving Her Today? Do I have to pull it up on uh, karaoke? I'm thinking because I, I am not familiar with it at all. Yeah, George Jones. That is an old uh, country okay. one. Yeah. See, what the, see if it sounds familiar. Yeah, bring it down, though, because it was hot last time. He kept her picture on his wall. Went half crazy now and then. Oh, that is old-ass country right there. <laughs> that is old-ass country. I probably know the song for the play. Uh -huh. um, you were always on my mind. And, oh, by the way, this is Rhonda Lee. Put this in no particular order. Uh, and that was Willie Nelson. Again, Three out of five solid choices. Uh, the other two, not not feeling it, Rhonda. And then uh, Gailey Hanna is uh, taking a, a exception with my choice of Piano Man being on the list. No, man. I, I agree with you on that one. That is a classic American song. I mean, I think it's hard for people to see it in that light because it's still very new to us, right? You know, like that's still a very young song in many ways. You know, especially when you compare it to like American Pie and you compare it to, you know, but... 
Um, I think that's a classic American song. This, it, it just paints such a perfect picture, and that's why I love the song so much, and I think that it's one of the best songs ever made. Outside of just being absolutely catchy, you can play it anywhere, anytime, mm-hmm. and people will start singing. Yep. Um, it's but one I of guess, my go-tos. I guess, uh, you know, the same could be said for, you know, Neil Diamond's Sweet Caroline and, you know, Journeys Don't Stop Believing and stuff like that, those sing-alongs. See, those two, I think, could be on the list easily. Uh, great songs. But uh, uh, there's something about Billy Joel's Piano Man, and I believe the story behind it, too, is of one where he is writing about a time when he was like not, not struggling or whatever, but I guess he would play under a pseudonym and be like Billy Kane or something like that, uh, you know, in a bar to make money or whatever it was. And uh, so these are the stories that kind of came out of it. But I just thought there was some, such great imagery. Yeah. And one of them, the one of the lines in Piano Man where he's talking about, uh, damn it. It's a very Rockwell-esque type of song right so like if you were to put that if you were to put that song into a painting i think it would be a quintessential american piece of art maybe maybe um i want to because there's a there's a line that i always think that he's talking about um you know two guys being gay huh and but every time i brought it up nobody's ever heard that before but i i feel yeah. like it is um exactly okay here we go now, Paul is a real estate novelist who never had time for a wife. And he's talking to Davey, who's still in the Navy and probably will be for life. To me, that is a story about two gay men. Hmm. Um, because back then, you know, the, the stereotype was, the, you know, the Navy was kind of synony- synonymous, right? Sure. Uh, with, the, with being gay. I don't know if it was synonymous, but there was definitely a correlation there. So, Thanks, yeah. village people. Now, Paul is a real estate novelist who never had time for a wife. He's talking to Davey, who's still in the Navy and probably will be for life. And I just think, you know, and the waitress is practicing politics. One of my favorite <laughs> moments of my career, of my radio career, was actually singing this song with Andrew McMahon. Now, remember, I can't sing. Andrew McMahon is an Emmy-nominated singer-songwriter been in multiple bands something corporate jack's mannequin and now currently uh andrew mcmahon in the wilderness he's opened up for billy joel multiple times as a matter of fact he's going to do it again uh coming up in miami here shortly oh cool right so we do this was when i was at 97x we do a, an acoustic show this is like 2011 or 12 and we bring him out to be a part of this thing and i'm out on stage with him and i don't know why i don't know why we do this or why i do this because i can't sing uh, but next thing you know, he fires up Piano Man. I've got a microphone, and I'm si- we're we're singing Piano Man uh, together on stage. But there's a picture, and I wish I, this is this is where I need to be better prepared because the picture is classic. It's me with a microphone, him at the piano, looking back. At me, but the look on his face is that because <laughs> if you're a singer, right? If you're a musician, when stuff is not on key or in key, it hurts. It hurts. <laughs> oh, it's painful. <laughs> But so you just see this look at his face like he's trying to smile and wince and cringe at the same time as I'm belting <laughs> out. Well, and see, I love doing that song in karaoke, too, but I typically have to bring it down um, uh, a key or two because uh, uh, towards the end, it gets up in the range there. And, yeah. and I can't hit some of those notes. I mean, even, hell, even Billy can't hit some of those notes anymore. So, yeah, taking exception with Piano Man being... One of the greatest songs ever made, unless unless you have to really break down it, you know these. If you're going to go down that path and make that kind of a list, you got to break it down musically, and it's very sim- a much more simple song, mm-hmm. you know, compared to say like a rock opera of of Bohemian rap Bohemian Rhapsody, or what about to carry on my wayward son? That's a solid one. I don't. It's a it's a good song. I don't think it's one of the greatest songs ever. Okay. Uh, Next up on uh, Stuff You Should Know, and welcome to the Wake Dot Show, by the way, with Fisher, Johnny Torres, and it is powered by, should I say powered by Bakemore Pie Studios in Tampa, or do they not want to be associated with this quite yet? No, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Powered by Bakemore Pie Studios in in Tampa. and uh, We're all in, man. Yeah, the, the the more I'm getting comfortable here, Johnny, the more I'm like, I'm with, uh, I'm with chords, let's move to the big studio. That's right. But, here's a caveat. Well, but I think this type of setting is a little bit more familiar to you as someone who came from radio is kind of having that little bit of a tighter studio. Yeah, because in their their big 
their main production facilities here, which they offered up to me. Said, hey, man, we got this huge, whatever, what do you call those walls again? The psych wall? The psych wall. Yeah. This huge psych wall. Uh, I mean, everything you can imagine that, that you would want in there, right? Here you yep. go. But sitting, <clears throat> sitting in that space when I didn't, you know, try to do that, felt very, yeah, very vulnerable and sure. open, open to attack. No, it's a big space. It's it, like being on stage. Yeah, and so, the, so we found this little, uh, this little closet, and it's tucked in the corner of Bakemore Pies. I'm like, oh, why don't you, would you stick us in here? And the owner, Cord, just like, why, why would you want to go into this closet when I have this brand new, beautiful studio for you? So here's what I'm thinking, Johnny Torres. <laughs> All right. We'll we'll make that switch. We'll because we'll make that switch into the uh, the big studio if they still want us there. If you guys still want me there, um, when this show is economically viable, I like it. Is here's the thing. One of the things that made me go, oh, we need to find another space was that first day that you and I went to do a test show that Friday morning, and the studio was already uh you know blocked out for the entire day because of a major client that was coming in. That's right. Because major client, that's there's real money associated with that. Yeah. There is zero money associated with this right now. So I if we get to the point where we are economically viable, mm-hmm. if that's even the right term. And and where where we get to have that space from seven to nine every single day because we're just as important or viable as you know clients. Well, I mean, I'm maybe not necessarily some of the uh, bigger ones, but uh, um, where we have that space blocked out every single uh, morning, then right. we'll move into that space. That makes a lot of sense. But and and like I said, I think we also uh, will reserve that as well for when we have big guests come yep. in, you know, and somebody that's going to be in studio with us where we might need a little more room. I did propose that. I threw that out as well if you guys want because that'd be kind of fun where every Friday, Friday show is done from there. We make it a big show. We make sure there's a lot of guests uh, yeah. coming in. And uh, so, you know, in the beginning, at least Friday mornings, we would be in the uh, main studio. I like we'll, it. See. we'll see. Thank you so much for uh, joining the Wake Dot Show. I'm Fisher, Johnny Torres. Next up, for Stuff You Should Know, Texas gunman uh, Devin Kelly's ex-wife says he had a lot of demons. Um, I still see a lot of stuff going around on Facebook trying to uh, attach this guy to a certain uh, political ideology and uh, know that that is fake news. The um, the the Facebook post with him and the Antifa flag and that is not real. Um, it looks like they're still trying to get to the bottom of the motive, but it looks like the motive might be personal, domestic. An ex-wife of Devin uh, Patrick Kelly, the Texas gunman who killed 26 people in a church, said Friday in her first interview since the massacre that she lived in constant fear of the guy. <coughs> and more information is coming to light about his actions in the weeks leading up to the shooting. Teresa Brenneman. 25 was Kelly's first wife. Quote, he had lots of demons or hatred inside of him, she told Inside Edition. Well, that's that's who you go to. <laughs> sure, you got CBS, ABC, Fox, NBC, everybody CNN tracking you down. Ah, let's go right to uh, the syndicated program. Let's go right to Inside Edition. <clears throat> Kelly pleaded guilty in 2013 to hitting, choking, kicking, and pulling her hair. The then 23-year-old Air Force Airman also admitted to fracturing the skull of her young son. On Friday, she described the marriage as filled with abuse and said she was once threatened over a speeding ticket. Quote, and he had a gun in his holster right here, and he took that gun out, he put it to my temple and told me, do you want to die? Do you want to die? The guilty plea earned Kelly a one-year sentence in military prison followed by a bad conduct discharge, one that was not reported to the feds, which is well documented. Now, she said he threatened to kill her and her whole family, uh, this week, the Air Force acknowledged that it failed to notify the FBI about the conviction, which would have barred Kelly from purchase, purchasing the firearms he used in the attack. <coughs> the, they had a Sunday service yesterday. And that's really been the big blow to the anti-gun movement has been the fact that, of course, they're demanding for more government when it comes to gun regulation. And the entire reason this guy even had guns was due to a failure of government bureaucracy. Um, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening to you. I was reading. What'd you say? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> no, 
the government really at the end of the day now that this is on the hands of the government they they had an opportunity to stop this guy from owning weapons they didn't follow through on their procedures um and and the the guy was able to purchase these weapons illegally uh under normal circumstances and uh, because they didn't follow through on their procedures the guy was able to purchase the guns and, and commit this crime <coughs> do you th- uh, you don't think he would have found another way you know, I, I mean, you can speculate. Because we'll look at the guy's history. He was an angry, angry person who... I think he would have done something, but not this. I think he would... Maybe his wife, maybe somebody else. I see. Um, I don't think it would have been this. Because where authorities are right now... I was trying to look for the exact uh, quote in here. That's why I was flipping through. I apologize. But um, the authorities were saying that it looks like he was going after the mother of his second wife. Um, when he walked into that uh, church there, he was looking to take some stuff out on her, I guess. Um, but that doesn't make any sense because he mowed down everybody. Yeah, well, and uh, the other story that came out about that today was uh, that they the, that church got together this Sunday for their first service since this happened. And uh, they didn't have it inside the church. They had it in a, uh, a temporary tent. Uh, at a distance from the church. But uh, what I didn't realize was that the pastor and his wife were out of town, but their 14-year-old daughter was in the church. Oh, wow. And their 14-year-old daughter was killed uh, in that situation there, and uh, and they weren't even there for, for that whole thing. Next up with stuff you should know, white Europe. 60,000 nationalists march on Poland's Independence Day. Uh, I only bring this up because nationalism is something that has been uh, uh, percolating and bubbling up uh, around the world over the past uh, couple of years, and including here in America. And if this were, you know, something small, if it was 600 people, maybe even 1,000 or two, I wouldn't have brought it up as a story. But 60,000 is a big story. Yeah. Tens of thousands of nationalist demonstrators. Mar- and the question here, uh, the, the discussion I want to get in with you, Johnny Torres, because you, sir, are of Hispanic descent. Yeah. Um, Colombian, I have. I guess I'm fra- I'm a mutt, but I guess uh, there's plenty of the northern European whiteness running through my course and <laughs> through my veins. So uh, I want to get into a discussion about how much of your identity is attached to your race. How? Because I, for me, yeah, very little, if any, of my identity is attached to my whiteness. We'll get to that in a second. <clears throat> Tens of thousands of nationalist demonstrators marched through Warsaw at the weekend to mark Poland's Independence Day, throwing red smoke bombs and carrying banners with slogans such as White Europe of Brotherly Nations. Police estimated 60,000 people took part in this event in what experts say was one of the biggest gathering of far-right activists in Europe in recent years. Demonstrators with faces covered, chant, uh, faces covered chanted, Pure Poland, White Poland, and Refugees Get Out, a banner hung over a bridge that read, Pray for Islamic Holocaust. Oh, jeez. The march organized by far-right groups in Poland is an annual event originally to mark Poland's independence, but according to Nick, this guy from the UK anti-extremism group, Hope Not Hate, it has become an important rallying point for international far-right groups. The numbers attending this year's are bigger, da 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 Some participants march under the slogan, We Want God, words from an old Polish religious song that the U.S. President Donald Trump quoted during a visit. So, let me ask you. Hmm. How much of your identity of who you are is attached to being Hispanic or Colombian? It's it's a it's it's kind of a weird question, um, I guess. Thank Just, you. Well, because I've never been asked that before, um, and again, I'm not somebody who walks around with the Colombian flag on my car. I mean, I will wear my soccer jersey from time to time. Um, Nationalist. You know, it's. Uh, <laughs> Um, love the culture, love my heritage, uh, my family's heritage. I love the language, the music, the food. I mean, everything about it. Uh, but, it, but again, I think, uh, the, when, if someone were to meet me, cause this has happened before. And if I don't disclose that I'm a Hispanic B from Colombia or anything to that extent, most of them assume that I'm white. Yep. Uh, and, and so that's obviously, I mean, I don't take issue with it. Um, I, in fact, I, I kind of see it almost as uh, uh, as as a compliment simply for the fact that I don't have an accent. You know, I, and you I, you were born in Colombia. No, I was born oh. in Miami. Oh, same thing. But just both kidding, my, just kidding. 
kidding. <laughs> Both of my parents are Colombian, and uh, and and so again, I I kind of see it as it doesn't matter where you're born, right? As it's the it, it depends but on where your parents are from. But the thing is, is that there's there are millions of people around the world who have, have attached themselves to some lineage, that some story, some mythos, yeah. mythology, where it takes them back to Eric the Red or Alexander the Great. I'm, you know, that kind of nonsense. I mean, good for you, and I'm so glad that you can trace your lineage back to, right to Alexander the Great. How amazing! <laughs> How good for you, white <laughs> white person. And then for for some of these people, like going back to uh, Hitler and the Nazis. They, you know, there are white supremacists out there. And by the way, I, th- I'm just, we're just talking about white supremacy right now, but you can find Japanese supremacists, Koreans, you know, all stuff sure. all around the world. Right. <clears throat> um, what the hell was I saying? Uh, I don't know. Damn it. Where was I going with that? Son of a. Well, the, what's uh, interesting to me too is, is again, that as a country, we are so insulated by the news of the day, by the media outlets. We are so filtered as to the world around us that uh, I, I would guess that a lot of people think that what's happening here in the United States uh, and I meant to say USA uh, that what's happening here in the in the US um, isn't happening around the world and so when they see uh, the, the again the resurgence of white supremacy here in the United States they think that oh well it's got to be because of President Trump or it's got to be because of this or that when we are seeing patterns of this all around the world this isn't just Europe. exclusive to the United States <clears throat> Europe right now is rampant with this type of demonstration so uh, uh, so a lot of the the supremacists that goes goes back to ancient times like uh, they really believe that they can trace their lineage back to Atlantis. So I just uh, did a little quick Google search, and I'm, I'm, I'm a, I clicked on white gods on Wikipedia. Is the belief that ancient cultures around the world were visited by Caucasian races in a- ancient times and that they were known as white gods. Based on 16th century... Cl- oh, wait, no, that's not what that is. That's different. Um, shoot. I wish... It, there it is. There it is. Nazi hunter Atlantis. Uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> why, why did you cross out Atlantis? I don't want you to cross out Atlantis. Sorry. I uh, I thought I could find a quick uh, you know read to uh, give you the backstory because it is kind of hilarious. It goes back not not just like it goes like back like a hundred thousand years or something like sure. that. But this is you have millions of people around the world who buy into their culture's supremacy and. I, I just that is just never been a part of my makeup, and I don't know yeah. if that was being raised in a Christian household, because this ties right into pride, taking pride in who you are and pride of where you came from, and but pride growing up was something that was I, I'm not I'm not going to use the term beat out of me. It was it was addressed. Sure, it was addressed quite frequently because pride is was uh, you know the original sin. You know, pride was, you know, and Lucifer went hand in hand. And um, and so so to me, that is just very, very foreign. But there are a lot of people whose identity are attached to their whiteness or their blackness or their Hispanicness. Yeah. And I just. Well, and if anything uh, has taught us with this kind of uh, newfound uh, fascination with doing uh, DNA um tracing and all that stuff you know that's available now is is that no one there, there, there's no sh- such thing as a pure individual right you know i mean it's just <laughs> that's uh, what it is you're right it's about it's it's this uh, false notion that we can actually achieve purity or perfection yeah i mean hell like even uh even hitler wasn't uh wasn't a uh, german like he was austrian and like there was, uh, and I think that there's even some people that say he was Jewish or, or, um, but anyways, he wasn't the you know of the pure white races he claimed to be, and uh, and so even even his whole mantra you know was was flawed from from the get out. Let's move on in stuff you should know. Detroit police officers fight each other. I wish we. I, I hope they release the uh, because there was one guy <laughs> that had his camera on. I want to see this because this seems like a movie. Seems like a television. Seems like something that would happen on Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah. There's now a Detroit Police Department an internal investigation into two different precincts getting into their own turf war as they converge on an East Side neighborhood. 
Neighbors who live on Andover in Detroit's east side will be the first to tell you this area is known as constant drug activity. Quote, it's definitely a drug problem for years. It has been a drug problem. I don't think anybody can stop it. Well, on Thursday, Detroit police certainly tried, but maybe too hard. Sources say that it started when two special ops officers from the 12th precinct were operating a push-off. <clears throat> Do you know what that is? A push-off? Yeah. No. Me neither. On Andover near Seven Mile. That is when two undercover officers pretended to be dope dealers. Oh, that's right by Eight Mile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting to... Uh, um, I wonder if they meant Eight Mile. Is there a Seven Mile? Probably. I mean, if there's an Eight Mile, why wouldn't there be a Seven Mile? Okay. Uh, that is when two undercover officers pretended to be dope dealers waiting for eager customers to approach, arresting potential buyers and seizing their vehicles. But this time, instead of customers, special ops officers from the 11th precinct showed up, not realizing they were officers. The They ordered the other undercover officers to the ground. Uh, Fox 2 was told the rest of the special ops teams from the 12th precinct showed up, and officers began raiding the drug house on uh, this block. But instead of fighting crime, officers from both pre- precincts began to fight each other. That's awesome. <laughs> One guy went to the hospital. That's uh, amazing. Sources say guns were drawn and punches were thrown while the homeowner stood and watched. The, so the homeowner <laughs> said, what the hell's going on here? Uh, I, I got to sell some drugs. You got to get out of my house. I'm selling the drugs. No, I'm selling the drugs. <laughs> uh, the department's top cops were notified along with internal affairs. Uh, one officer was taken to the hospital. Each officer involved is now under investigation, and the departments are trying to figure out what the hell happened. Quote, you have to have more communication, said the resident. I don't understand what happened about that. Communicate. So, so, so the perp, the perp's going, listen, I've got some advice for the, uh, the, the police uh, officers in my town. Um, could you guys do a little coordinating before you show up at my house? Kick my get door your down. act together. Give me a heads up. Uh, Fox 2 was told that, that uh, of the units, one of the units had body camera video that detailed the entire incident. It's part of an internal affairs investigation, but as soon as that is over with, I'm sure that will get released unless oh, yeah. unless somebody puts in a request for it and forces them to uh, release it, uh, which I don't know if... Oh, no, I guess they can hold on to that while there's still a, a pending investigation. Well, right? what's amusing is is that they're going to launch an investigation into the fight, right? An internal affairs investigation into this fight. But had it not been two police precincts against each other, like it would have been perfectly okay. What do you mean? If one of them were... Uh, one was a... Uh, were cops and the others were was a gang? Sure, yeah, and a well, yeah, fight broke you're right. out. You're right. <laughs> it's like, oh no, that's okay. Uh, I want to get to something. Po- you know, it's fu- we need to um, <clears throat> we need to figure out a way to have a break or two during this. Yeah, because I, 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 I I'll get on that. No, I mean we are gonna. So uh, let's let's kind of tease only for this a little bit. Only for bathroom breaks. Well, yeah, not only that, but also um, we we do have bake more music, which you are now hosting. And, uh, you know, that's coming up, uh, I believe, next week. And so the idea behind that is is that uh, we have a local band come here to the Bake More Pie studio, and they perform for us. And uh, that is a partnership that we have with the Gasparilla Music Festival. And so we're going to incorporate those performances into this show so uh, that not only do you get a break from us yammering for two hours, uh, but that you also get a little bit of music in your day as you... Uh, so uh, nicely put uh, at the beginning of the show that you were trying to eliminate in the first place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what? Now, in my later years, now that I'm older, I do appreciate music. I do appreciate, uh, you know, the, the music that I played and the, and the music that, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, my, my early years, my ego was driving me to try to drop as many songs as I could so I, my, I could be an all-talk morning show. Well, and you can see the purpose of it now, too, you know, as far as what it brings to a radio station. Um, this is a pretty cool story. Just the beginnings. One of Bill Gates' investments firms has spent $80 million on a smart city to develop a smart city, a brand new com- uh, community, and it's uh, out in Arizona, I believe it is. A large plot of land is about 40 minutes west of downtown Phoenix, yes. The proposed community made up of close to 25,000 acres of land is called Belmont. How? Can, well, I, I don't even need to get into the details of the story. Because it should immediately light your brain up. Like I, I, I feel like we're within a few years of of their cutting to this city and just seeing all kinds of cool stuff uh, happening. I think that, or you know, because again, this is just like a little hobby. This is this is uh, Bill Gates's playtown. You know, I mean, for for him, it, it might as well be a Lego set. 
All right, we got to do something here because I got to pee. So <laughs> either A, we bring up bring up um, uh, uh, and talk about more. We either cut the show now or go ahead and talk about the, you know, bring up the uh, band stuff and talk about music. And I'll be right back. All Maybe. right. So <laughs> while, while Fisher takes a break, luckily the bathroom is close by. Uh, I will talk about again uh, the Bake More music. Uh, we got that coming up uh, here on the, is it this week? Oh, man, it might be this week. So let me see. One, two, three. Yeah, it's this week, this Thursday. If you go over to Facebook.com slash Bake More Pies, that's Facebook.com slash Bake More Pies. That's the studio from which we originate this show. Uh, We're going to be doing a show Thursday night uh, with a band called Ro Joma. Uh, and uh, it's an odd sounding name, but uh, pretty cool music. These guys, I think, are kind of that, that jam band type. Um, and so a little bit of fish, a little bit of kind of reggae kind of thing to them. A very unique sound. And uh, again, this is a partnership that we're fortunate to have with the Gasparilla Music Festival. That's coming up in March. So you'll be hearing a lot about the Gasparilla Music Festival on this show as well. Uh, if you want tickets to that show, I can probably promise you we'll, we'll have at least a couple to give away. So uh, Gasparilla Music Festival coming up in March. And Rojo Ma may be one of the bands performing at the music festival. And uh, they'll be performing here in the Bakemore Pie Studios Thursday night. <laughs> uh, and uh, Chris Fisher is going to be hosting it. Uh, it's a fun time. Usually about uh, it's usually about a half hour show, 30, 40 minute show. And uh, and and you know we we can also maybe talk to Chords about uh, giving away a couple of uh, guest passes for them to join us here in the studio. Let's do that. Let's definitely do that. Um, so do, I, do we even go back to the community? By the way, welcome back. I, th- I think it's a super interesting uh, idea. And I think it's what's really cool is that we're seeing these guys now. You know, they always talk about that we highlight celebrities and we highlight athletes and we kind of put them on these pedestals. But we're seeing the emergence of intellect become a... Um, Famous? A, sexy? Yeah, exactly. It's becoming like part of the mainstream pop culture, you know, so looking at stuff that Bill Gates is doing now, looking at Elon Musk, looking at Richard Branson, you know, these are now becoming household names and they are dramatically changing the world around us. Quote, Belmont will create a forward thinking community with a communication and infrastructure spine that embraces cutting edge technology designed around high speed digital networks, data centers, new manufacturing technologies and distribution models, autonomous vehicles and autonomous logistics hubs. I cannot wait. <clears throat> At first, if, you, if you're picturing just Westworld in your head, the movie Westworld, this isn't going to be it. I'm wondering who's going to live there, right? Like, what is this close to? You know, what kind of industry is going to be there? Tech, 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 tech. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. And you know, it's not going to be you or me. Uh, but That's for sure. I think it's going to be interesting to watch this be built and what they do, because out of that, there's going to be successes and failures. Yep. And you're going to see whatever they're doing there, the the successes start being implemented around the world. And that is going to be very, very cool. <clears throat> Good morning to uh, Miguel uh, saying hello. He hey, like, Miguel. Seems to like Bill Gates' idea. <clears throat> what will be interesting, too, is to see how they implement their form of government, right? So what kind of form, uh, what type of government are they going to have? Uh, in terms of a, again, is it going to be just like your normal city council, county commission, that sort of thing? Or, or is it going to be, uh, is that going to be experimental as well? Uh, and I see that Cords said, let's go ahead and give away passes for sharing the wake.show. So for all of you that, all of you that shared, uh, the wake.show page or this stream from the wake.show, then you are all, uh, registered to win passes uh, to come check out that uh, Bake More music. Sweet. All right. So let's give away guest passes for sharing the wake.show. And Cords also followed up. Great goal. Um, we could have live audience on those days, you know, that we use the uh, uh, big studio. That'd be really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Felix, when it comes to um, picking the greatest songs ever made, uh, country songs, dot, 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 my truck, my dog, my ex, <laughs> and keep on drinking. That is a lot of country songs. Um, haven't watched in a game till NFL gets its bleep together. Why am I saying bleep? We're streaming. Gets its shit together. And now with Giselle demands, I see uh, why 
they're a bunch of elitists. I see. I think there's a lot of things working against the uh, the NFL. Yeah. Um, not just this um, uh, the the kneeling, but I think there's a lot of things uh, working against the NFL. Elliot is quickly uh, becoming one of my least favorite commenters. Man. <laughs> I'm just Why saying. Is that, I feel everybody I've ever worked with his has little that, piano man comment, dude. That's one of my songs, man. That's that's he's he's hitting me where it hurts. But I, you know, he's always been one of my favorite commenters. I'm uh, joking. I mean, and, oh, okay. but but he is hating on piano man. He's like piano man is one of the greatest songs ever. Like Speed is one of the greatest movies of all time. We all know it. We don't turn it off. But come on. How how can you hate on Piano Man like that? Yeah, comparing it to Speed. Is it too simple of a song? Is it just a simple song telling a simple story in a bar? I love it. I guess because uh, maybe it's me, and that's why it was on my list. So screw screw you guys. You can make up your own list. <laughs> but Piano Man's on the list because when every time from the first time I've heard that song, it's like uh, there's a movie playing. Yep. And like I, I can I can I'm in the bar. I can smell it. I can see everything mm-hmm. that he's describing. And I just, I don't know. I just think it's such a great song. But I'm going to have to, I, and, and, you know, my fault here, but I'm going to put a list together and I'll have it for you tomorrow. It's going to be solid. Beer, beer, truck, 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 beer. <laughs> 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 Making fun of any country songs that you try to put on the list. By the way, uh, got a story also about something, uh, somebody we can uh, hopefully bring in t- uh, to the show tomorrow. Not sure if uh, physically or. Uh, or maybe via Skype like we did with Rachel today. But apparently there's this amazing mural that has gone up on Franklin Street, up by the hall on Franklin. Uh, yeah, just look up. Uh, the guy's name is Painkiller Cam, which is not very representative of uh, his talent. Uh, but this guy saw uh, the, the video of him on Twitter. And um, so look up, uh, look up Lady, Lady Gaga. Put Lady Gaga right after that. This guy put together this amazing mural of Lady Gaga on Franklin Street. I don't know if it's on the Hall on Franklin or if it's just near the Hall on Franklin, which is this new kind of restaurant concept. Um, but is this the one? Yeah. I mean, so Lady Gaga is coming to town, uh, which is kind of news to me. I mean, she's amazing, but uh, just not somebody on my to-see list. And this guy, I guess, is incredibly inspired by her, a huge fan. And he's taken it upon himself to make this amazing mural on Franklin Street that she has already now seen because of the attention he's getting. Uh, the Tampa Bay Times, as you pulled up here, is, uh, is covering it. Um, she's already seen the video. She said that it brought her to tears. Uh, it, it's a gorgeous mural, uh, which I love. I mean, we're seeing a lot of the mural thing in Miami. We're seeing it in St. Pete. We're seeing, starting to see a little bit of that here in Tampa. I'm all for it. Uh, and this is, this is going to be one of those new places that people are going to want to go to and take the selfie and all that stuff. And, uh, and so I'm hoping he can uh, maybe join us tomorrow. As a resident of St. Petersburg, I love it. Absolutely love it. And for those I know in, in the Bay Area, for those of you that are not from the Southwest Florida, can you pull the uh, mm. pictures uh, back up uh, just real quick? Uh, there, we go. there we go. You can even play that if you want. I, I think it's short. Awesome. Um, eh, I, if you haven't been to St. Pete in a while, and I realize that people here in the Bay Area don't cross the bridge, I think we've already touched on that. It's a very odd thing. Um, and by odd, you know, I'm not from Southwest Florida, I'm from Central Florida. So. And where I was in Ocoee, like everything was a 30 minute drive. It was 30 minutes out to Claremont for my high school sweetheart. It was 30 minutes to work. It went wild, 30 minutes to work uh, in Altamont Springs to XXL. And uh, so I, I don't mind driving at all. But here in, the, in Tampa, in Tampa Bay, people do not cross the bridge, do not go over the bay if they don't have to. And, uh, and if you even ask them, like, hey, man, why don't you come over? Oh, my God. I, it's like you're asking them to pack for three days, <laughs> you know? Um, but. Uh, but one of the cool things, if you haven't been to St. Pete in a while, is this mural thing. Now, I know the mural that we're, we've got pulled up here is on Kennedy here in Tampa, and I would love to see more of that stuff around here. Franklin, Franklin. Or Franklin. Yep. But uh, but there are everywhere in St. Pete. You can even take tours. If You know, you can go find a little Segway. You're going to be a, a tourist. Get a little Segway tour, and they'll take you to all the murals and tell you the stories behind them and stuff like that. But I think it makes downtown look very cool. But I, I could also see how some other people might uh, see it the exact opposite. It looks well because some of it gets pretty edgy. So if you go down to the Wynwood District in Miami, it gets to be there are certain pieces that look more like street art. 
than actual art. This is obviously a very beautiful mural. We've got the other uh, mural, the, the very famous City of Tampa mural that's on, uh, uh, I think, on Florida, uh, right there at, uh, right next to, oh gosh, the name, I, I'm forgetting the name of the restaurant now, a uh, fly bar. And, uh, and that mural again is amazing. I'm sure they're going to leave that up as long as possible. Uh, and but I think the reason we're seeing such a huge surge of this in St. Pete has been because they have just made such an amazing effort to embrace the art culture there. Um, thank you so much for uh, being part of the Awake Dot Show today. This is uh, day day one of the full launch. Thank you so much for the shares. For those of you sharing, uh, you're automatically registered to uh, win passes. Uh, to be part of a, a special performance here at Bake More Pies coming up. And I'm scrolling Yeah, we'll go ahead and pick that winner today, being our inaugural show, uh, uh, because the show is Thursday. Uh, and so we want to also give plenty of people to uh, time to uh, make arrangements to be here. Um, and, I, uh, and I'm looking through my uh, comment section here, <clears throat> and I need some help. I probably should have posted uh, something. <laughs> What do, what do I do about my wife? It's her birthday today, and I messed up. Here's the thing. Before you guys jump all over me, I mean, you can. But I, I, I had it in my, this, this happens to me. I'm not a good gift giver. I was back when I was, you know, making money. Um, because I would wait till the last second and then, you know, go just buy, a, like I said, 100 to $500 worth of stuff and, and feel like that was good enough. <coughs> But now um, I, I can't spend that kind of money. I would get yelled at, especially. And um, and so I, I I've been trying to rack my brain for the past couple of weeks. Well, what do I get her? What do I get her? I, I can't get her anything. And so it's not until late last night that I realized just how stupid I am. And I mean, I know I, I every few weeks I realize how stupid I am in a different category. Um, and it's we're hanging out at. Uh, some some friends of ours house and it's her best friend and then it tells me son of a bitch I, I keep forgetting about the best she has a group of girlfriends that I need to quit getting trapped in my head going what can I do what can I do what can I do for and then I can't find anything good enough and then it's day of and I'm scrambling to do something yeah all I got to do is call one of them that's right and be like, hey, listen, I'm having some issues. Oh, wait, really? Well, she was just talking recently about bop, 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 bop. I was like, oh, really? It's that, that simple. It would have been that simple. And I already have a gift. <laughs> but now what's happening is um, I'm going to get off. We're going we're gonna to wrap up the show here in a minute. Well, luckily, we're, from where we are, it's going to be very easy for you because we are in exactly the, the middle of in between two of Tampa's best malls. International Plaza and West Shore Mall. That's right. But I got to be careful. And I'm only going to have a few moments to wander around. I really have to think of something, and I don't does have she, any. Does she read? I, I'm, I'm just saying that. Does she read? Books are always good. Ooh. Okay. Uh, does does Mindy, uh, what's her, Mindy, what's her face? Uh, Lahiri. I know that's not a real last name. Kaling? Yes. Does she have a new book out? A, I don't know about a new book. I know <laughs> she has a book. Because I know she read one of hers already. So if she's got a new one out, I could do that. Yeah. Or something in that uh, category. Uh, otherwise, I'm I'm screwed. I guess what I'm basically saying to you guys is, as it's getting towards the end of the show, I'm getting a little nervous. Elliot writes, he goes, get her a gift card to Top Golf. That's the gift that comes back to you. <laughs> she already told me because my go-to <clears throat> for her is a gift card to TJ Maxx because she is a TJ Maxx to the max. A maxinista. She's a maxinista. That whole little that. TJ Maxx, Marshalls, whatever that, you know, little Ross, yeah. Ross, yeah, that, that little tripe. But TJ Maxx is her jam. And uh, and it's always it's great because, you know, I, I get her a TJ Maxx gift card. And I know it's going to go to good use, but she told me specifically not to get her one of those. <laughs> <laughs> it's a test. She said it it's had got tests written all over it. She said it had nothing to do with her uh, not loving TJ Maxx. But I guess she said she's got a backup of of these cards mm. so she doesn't need another one right now she's collected them mm. yeah so i think what we have to do is go to tj maxx <laughs> and prove <laughs> because they got great knickknacks you know yeah you, they've got the, the little section where you can just kind of wander through and even if she it's too late 
it's well, too late. The, I've screwed up. Well, and the other thing is, is that if you go there and you buy something for the house, like you said, you haven't really figured out what your house is going to look like. You haven't picked out furniture. So you can't even buy something to decorate the house because if you do, more than likely you you are going to choose poorly, as they say in Indiana Jones, and uh, you, you'll, you'll eventually have to return it anyways. My, my thought for one second, I don't know if you saw it in my face, I got excited for one second. I was just going to go with that plan, and even if she returns, it doesn't matter. I was like, I still got you something. Sure. But she'll know. She'll know that I I picked it up today, the last minute. She'll know it's from TJ Maxx because she's. I'm sure she's already seen whatever it is that I would get. But a spa day, is she into that? She's got one scheduled coming up. Uh, she's using a card that my mom gave her. Oh. Uh, when she oh, damn it, she mom. graduated law school or passed the bar or something like that. Um, man, you're in a that's a that's a tough spot. It's my to own be in. fault. It's my own fault. But but it's it's my own fault. But in a way that I can't help it because I thought a lot about this and I think a lot about it and it and it spir- and you get tra- and you go spiraling down because there's no answer i couldn't figure out anything and it never dawned on me just to call her best friend and go i need some help here i uh, if I, I can't buy her anything for the house because she won't like it and yeah. i can't you know what about I dinner can't spend and a movie money. what about you know i mean maybe crossing the bridge going down to hyde park either doing literally dinner and a movie at Cine Bistro, or there's amazing restaurants now there in hyde park you know uh little tempano action which is my favorite uh you know hit it up with uh i went and saw murder at the orient express uh this weekend thanks to uh roy seringo i went and checked it out i loved it because i have not read the book or seen previous iterations of of the movie um so and it was good it was good Good. it was very cool and uh, had man man did it have a lineup holy a-list it had so many a-list actors there it was blew me away so Cords just text me, make her something. <laughs> that would be Cords' go-to response, yes. That was uh, on the table. Um, but I, 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 I forgot, I messed up one thing, and that is I thought I had today. Yeah. I thought I had all day today, but I don't. She took today off. And oh. she's already texted me that she can't find her keys, which means I'm going to have to get home quickly after the show. There you go. Get her a set of keys. <laughs> My buddy Chris writes, he goes, uh, Victoria's Secret gift card or Todd Superstore. It's a win-win. Mm. Hey, now. And uh, <laughs> Thanks for that Howard Stern. Hey, now. Yeah. Johnny Griffin uh, says, uh, I see stomach cleavage between your buttons. Good morning. <laughs> Johnny, oh, we need to have Johnny Griffin on the show. This is a, a good friend of mine who, who, who got rid of everything. Um, tricked, oh, you told me about him. Tricked out a van, yeah, and is just driving around the country, living off of nothing. That's cool. Uh, he's a very interesting dude, and we need to check in with him and, and some of his stops. Yeah, people uh, like that fascinate me. Uh, one of my really close friends had a couple who lived in his backyard in a school bus that they remodeled into essentially a tiny home into like an rv so it's a it's it's basically an rv it's a very small rv but it's it was made out of a, what was formerly a school bus and uh and they they parked it in his uh in his backyard for a couple of years and now they moved off to wherever because they're both uh, incredibly brilliant uh, doctors, and so I don't know where they went off to, but uh, maybe uh, I'll park a bus in the backyard and see what she thinks about that. <laughs> so here, here's what my thought was: you know, you're gonna be living in it. That's what's gonna happen. You're right. Uh, my thought was this: uh, because I, I really can't spend too much money on her, she would lose her mind. If I spend more than like, I, I better be able to justify like sixty dollars. I'm not even kidding. Um, it better be something huge. Like I got half off of something if I'm spending sixty dollars. Man, you like hit a hit a home run with this one. You would think, but that plays. It's it's the exact opposite of my personality. <laughs> Give me, uh, I, I because it's easier for me to walk into a few places. Oh, this is cool. This is cool. This is cool. Next, oh, oh, four hundred dollars. Well, four hundred dollars. Here you go, honey. Uh, so yeah, you're right. I guess I've hit the jackpot, but it does not play into my personality. Um, the the house we just bought was flipped. And so on the side of the house, uh, they didn't clean up after them, you know, uh, everything. So there's still a lot of crap there. And some of the crap that they left behind is actually like some uh, saw horses, you know, uh, that I guess, I don't know, 
broke or but anyway, there's a lot of wood. And so yeah. I had this, I do have an idea uh, to build something for her, but it would include the dog. So it's technically building stuff with the dogs, but it's for her. I sure, would. right. But then again, I thought I had today. So if I was going to go with that plan, yeah. I figured, all right, I can, I can do that today. She's literally waiting for you right now. But she's literally waiting for me at home. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm screwed. Randy Taylor says, good morning, Chris. And Chanel number five, always a win. Maybe. I don't know. That's a classic no, it, gift. No, because she, she, when she buys perfume, she gets cute coupons. That's another thing about our our life now is she is... Is she doing she, the coupon thing? Oh, my gosh. Yes. She is a couponer. Oh, boy. Do you say coupon or coupon? I say coupon. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bothers me when I hear coupon. Um. So... All the, you know, whatever perfume or cologne that I have or whatever, I can't just go buy my own cologne now. If I want a cologne, then I have to go to her first because she's going to find me uh, coupon codes either to get it online or this and this and this and this, you know, and save money. Um, so I can't, it's, it's not as simple as that. What if I, is there like a coupon book that I, that I could buy her? Probably. That's, no, that's a horrible present. So, <laughs> so this is her first birthday. First birthday. As your wife. As my wife. And I have nothing. Mm. I had something. This is not good. I had this something and, I, and it's escaping me now. Um, Elliot says, steal something nice on the way out of the studio. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Say, look, honey, I got you this uh, old-fashioned radio as a decoration item. You know, and she's a lawyer, too. Oh, nice. She's all about the law and whatnot, except, of course. Well, uh, get her maybe a book on, uh, what's that book on uh, uh, Justice Ginsburg? Ruth no, Bader Ginsburg. No, 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 no. Uh, do, not, do not confuse her being a lawyer with her caring about what's going on in, <laughs> in law. Uh, I'm just screwed. Uh, Let's just hit one more story before we get out of here. Get her a black robe. <laughs> a sexy judge's robe? Hey, now. Uh, according to a new study, people who exercise are 33% less likely to develop lower back pain than those who do. Huh. According to a study, people who exercise are 33% less likely to develop lower back pain than those who do. And if you already have back pain, all hope is not lost. The same study found that regular exercise reduces the severity of back pain. I bring this up because I started back in the mobile DJ game which is where I started my career back when I was 15 years old. And, uh, you know, so used to, you know, slinging all kinds of equipment in my younger days. Well, the first wedding I did six weeks ago, or the first wedding I'd done in a long time, uh, I was just slinging speakers like I was 20. And all of a sudden, you just feel a little bing. Mm. And, uh, and it hasn't gone away since. And so that's been like six or seven weeks. And over the weekend, um, uh, my back, or actually Sunday, yesterday, my back seized up. And it wasn't lower back. It was like right in the middle, just seized up. And I, it was a rough day. And let me, let me uh, run this by you guys too. When you're in a situation like that, your back is seized up. Talk legit pain, whatever. And somebody offers you a prescription pill to take care of that. But that's technically illegal, right? You're, you're not allowed to take somebody else's meds. Right. I know this happens all the time. Do you go, yeah, sure, thank you. Or do you go, no, 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 I, I appreciate the offer, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just stay here. You know, if it gets worse, I'll go to my doctor and get it legit. Yeah. Now, uh, Johnny Torres, I'll start with you because you're somebody who has never even, you don't have never dabbled in recreational uh, drugs at all, period. No. Now, I'm not talking about recreational, but people do yet use this for recreational. So sure. My, my neighbor, uh, who had back surgery recently, goes, uh, oh, I do want a, uh, not a painkiller, a uh, muscle relaxer. Mm. You want a muscle relaxer. And, you know, when you're sitting there hunched over, there's nothing. I, I want this pain to go. I want this uncomfortableness to go away. So in my head, I go, I go, yeah. I mean, I guess that if, you know, because I was talking about going to the chiropractor. And, you know, if this. Which I've done. Uh, I'm a big fan of the chiropractor. Haven't been in a long time. And he's like, well, if you need a, a muscle relaxer, all right, all right, I'll, I might get that, you know, from you later. I never went back, you know, and got it from him. Mm -hmm. But I remember, I think the only reason I didn't do it is because I don't know them that well. And just because of the state of things, 
um, especially in our state when it comes to pills and addiction and stuff like that. Yeah. I was like, I just, I guess I felt uh, a little weird and uh, going back, go, hey, can I get one of those, you know, muscle relaxers from you? That being said, I woke up this morning and I was able to move. My back is still killing me, but I'm able to move. And so I didn't need it to sleep, which is, that was my big concern. Right. Is I was like, man, I would, this, because the night prior to that was very difficult sleeping because of my back. And so if that were able to put me out and I'll just relax, that would be amazing. Uh, but I didn't go back and uh, ask. What would you have done in that situation? Uh, well, so I had a similar incident a couple of years ago. I was in Jacksonville and uh, and doing a very different type of work than I usually do. And so my back seized up on me to the point where I couldn't even stand up straight. Ugh. It was my upper back. And it, it got so painful that I, I, I caved. I went to a chiropractor. Uh, of course, uh, the chiropractor did what he did. And then there was a massage therapist who did his thing. And uh, I mean, that helped immensely. Uh, but I have seen that when I do go to the gym, you know, you like and I think it's just it, it's, you know, your muscles start to you know, just get stronger and uh, and aren't going to crap out on you in situations. See, that's like the that. point to all this. Yeah, if I weren't out of shape. If I would do a, a sit up every now and again, if I do some crunches and I had a solid core, then my back wouldn't be because I in my head, I'm yeah. like, oh, I need to go to the chiropractor. I need to get this worked out. But the reality is, is no, you're a 45 year old man and you need to get your ass out and uh, and stay active and yeah. make sure your core is strong. And even it's again, it doesn't have to be like a super intense workout. I mean, you don't have to go out and CrossFit, you know, but even if you go out there, do a little uh, just a little lifting, a little bit of cardio and you're good, man. And by the way, this sentence was written wrong. It should have been, according to a new study, people who exercise are 33% less likely to develop lower back pain than those who don't. It says those who do. We have those who don't exercise. Yeah. What, so uh, what's your exercise? You're, you're, younger, you're a younger man than me by a couple of years. Are you 35? Oh, I'm, uh, 37? 37. 37. 37. Yeah. Uh, so do you have a workout routine? How do you stay active? No. Because I know you're putting in 12, 14-hour days here. Yeah. Uh, I I am promising myself that before the end of the year, I'm going to start doing some sort of physical activity, but I haven't been in a while. Uh, I canceled my gym membership, I think, a couple of years ago, right around the time that my daughter uh, was coming into the picture, and I uh, haven't been back since. But, but I'm actually looking at doing something cool, like one of these cardio boxing things. What about a soccer club or something like that? That'd be cool too, but I need to work my way up there, man. Because soccer, whew, man, the, the just uh, forget it. I wouldn't make it five minutes. Yeah. Johnny uh, Griffin says he goes. I'd probably start working out. I hear that people uh, that do are thirty percent less likely to have back pain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So me and my back pain and my my heartache. But I, I it never crossed my mind to take something for my back. Um, I went to the chiropractor a couple times and slowly but surely the pain went away and haven't had any issues since. Uh, every once in a while I'll get a little tense, but nothing to that extent. All right. Well, uh, I guess if we haven't uh, come up with any good plans and what I, I need to do for my, my, my beautiful wife's birthday today, I, that's all the reason why I'm lingering. We should cut this at nine, but I don't want the show to end because then, <laughs> then I have to face, face the facts that I am a horrible husband. Oh, and that sucks. Uh, oh, oh, this was my idea. I'll do better so, for Christmas, honey. <laughs> so my idea was, I mean, have you? are you guys completely unpacked? No. Damn it. Well, that was another idea I had, too. I was like, okay, well, um, you know, I'll spend the day, I mean, really just seeing how much I can knock it just hour after hour after hour after hour. And so when she comes home from work later, then uh, she'll be really surprised by how much work has been done. But this is the universe back in me in my corner. corner. I said, nope, you don't have those uh, decisions. Uh, you waited. You waited. You procrastinated. And then you forgot that she took today off. So you have no time. <laughs> no time whatsoever. Right now, she's sitting at your house on your couch, legs crossed, arms crossed, with a look of disappointment. Only if she's listening. Have you noticed that she made a comment on our, our comment section yet today? Not today. Not today, but she has been listening uh, yeah. on the regular. So I'm I'm thinking she hasn't heard any of this or seen any of this. Well, hopefully. 
you know, maybe uh, go hit the beach, do some, uh, do a nice big lunch. I'm just going to sit here. I'm just, I'm not leaving. We're just going to go to lunch, go to, you know, take her to Clearwater Beach and do like a nice lunch on the beach, oh, you she know. She started and, a diet. You know, she's counting points now. Oh, right. It's your birthday. Everybody gets a day off of their diet on their birthday. All right. I'm going to. Uh, hey, are Walgreens still around? And see, do, <laughs> do they still have those little sections of uh, gifts? Oh, and- God. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Those, oh, I, it wouldn't be the first time. Uh, I'm sure. That I uh, dipped into one of those places on the way to somebody's function. I wouldn't even buy my daughter toys from a Walgreens or a CVS. All right. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, tune in tomorrow <laughs> to find out how uh, today huh. went down. And uh, I'll let you know if there's any yelling. <laughs> You'll figure it out, man. It'll hit you. It'll hit you. I promise. There is there is one thing. If that'll, not, she'll hit you. <laughs> there is one thing that'll make her happy. Oh, okay. Um, I'm still owed some money from the last gig that I I was doing. Yeah, I'm owed one paycheck, right? Yeah, and it's uh, it's been a couple of months, and so I email them every week to see what the latest is, and I you know, and I uh, there's never a good response. And so she wants me to email the owner, you know, not go through the uh, the accounting department, email the owner directly. And she's been wanting me to do this for a couple weeks now. Yep. And basically like, hey, what's going on? You know, why haven't you paid me? Are you planning on paying me? And, uh, you know, when? Um, well, and he's responsive. I mean, yeah, again, uh, we both know uh, who I'm talking about. That's right. And uh, and he's typically responsive to phone calls or emails. Well, the last time that I sent him an email, I got fired. Oh. I sent him an email on Thursday night. It was like, hey, uh, you, you know, because they were backed up a, quite a bit of pay. Yep. And I was just trying to figure out what the plan. I just want to know what the plan was, you know. And uh, and so the next after I send that email directly to him, I was in the office the next day going, OK, we're going to have to cut. We're cutting the show. We weren't able to get uh, enough advertisers in there. It's not fair to you that we're not paying you and blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, we're a little behind in payments and this and this and this. Oh, I, I get it. I understand. I understand. Um, and also, like, I guess one of the things that is. Um, well, I can tell you plenty of reasons why there aren't advertisers on that station. And I'll tell you, it's not the programming. Right. Yeah, it's not my fault. Um. But the thing is, she doesn't feel like I've been aggressive enough in pursuing what is owed to me. Yep. And it's something that has been driving her absolutely insane. And they are right up the street. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're Tampa offices right here. She just pop in. Yeah, no, I... (laughs) Well, here's the thing. Maybe maybe when we cut the feed, I don't leave yet, and I send that email off, that's not a good birthday present. That's not gonna. That's not a good birthday present. No, it's like happy birthday. They gave me a check that they owed me. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be like I'm getting the check. I'd just be. T- I'd be just telling her, hey, I, I finally sent that email uh, <laughs> to the owner that you've been wanting me to send. No, no, scratch that. That's not a good uh, birthday gift. No. All right, then tune in tomorrow to uh, find out how how all this plays out today. Or, or if I'm getting uh, beaten later, I'll make sure I Facebook Live can get as much of it on uh, camera as possible. Sure. Evidence and good show content. It's yeah, a win-win. Yeah. I'm a great husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being a part of the Wake.show. Uh, make sure you share, share, share the Wake.show. Uh, everybody who shares will be registered to win a pair of passes for this Thursday night to come to uh, check out the facilities and be a part of Bake More Music and the private concert that we will have uh, then. Johnny Torres, anything before we get out of here, sir? No, nah, man, I'm excited about uh, this guy coming on. I'm uh, the guy with the Lady Gaga mural. All right. I love that kind of stuff. So. All right. Tomorrow, 7 a.m. Thank you for watching Streaming the Wake.show.